Well, good evening, good evening, good evening. We want to welcome you to the Marcia Week Show, coming to you live from the beautiful island of Barbados. And it's a joy for us to welcome all of you that are joining us tonight on this Marcia Week Show. Uh, it's going to be a very exciting edition tonight. And of course, um, I'm going to leave you with a few little surprises Uh as we go through the night, but a real joy to have all of you with us in the show this evening. So we want to welcome you as you are joining us. Again, I know some of you have been on, uh, my goodness, from as early as, according to the information I see here, 21 minutes after four. My goodness. And we want to say thank you for being so committed uh, to the show. Thank you for being so committed uh, to the loyal opposition, and we want to say good evening to all of you, the members of the loyal opposition that are joining us tonight. Rose 5111, Remy M6070, uh, a joy to have you back. Nigel Carrington, um, thank you. Keep the pressure on going forward. We certainly expect to. Um, and I know my, my team is going to be helping me to handle some of these comments. Monica Ince, good night to you as well. Jell Biz, Colin Roach, Power Legal Services in Barbados. Um, uh, where is the image? That is very important when, <laughs> when, we, when we come to it. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, I'm just going to give a chance for a few more viewers to come on to the show tonight. And because the prime minister is still speaking in the budget and what we plan to do is to take you over to the budget live uh, for a few minutes. And hopefully she won't be speaking much longer. She's been on since three o'clock. This is one of the longest uh, budget speeches I've heard in my life. This is now four hours that she has been speaking. Um, and uh, we certainly are interested in hearing what she has to say. I won't be making too many comments with regards to the budget tonight, because I have been on the road for the entire afternoon, been listening to it, and I, I want to hear the full gambit of everything before we even give consideration to commenting. In addition, we would like to hear what the leader of the opposition has in terms of his response, and that will be tomorrow evening at 3 o'clock, and I would imagine he would be given the same amount of time to speak as the Prime Minister uh, would have been given this evening. So good evening to all of you, FX Trading, BBB, BB, and Sir Alfred Benjamin. God bless you, Sir Alfred. You're back with us again, Brooklyn, New York City. A real pleasure. I, I got to come there and visit with you, man. Got to come there. You've been so committed and faithful to the program. A real pleasure to have you again with us tonight. Colin Clark, good evening. Cecilia Miller, uh, Rochelle Thornhill, a pleasure to have you with us. Tony Paris, Fabian Yard, Oh, my goodness. Tyron Nurse and uh, Robert M.H. Good night to you. Good night. Thank you, sir. Uh, Sandra Franklin, a pleasure to have you with us again tonight. Um, and it would appear, it would appear as uh, I'm just paying attention over here to the evening as well. Just let me see um, what's happening here. Okay, she's still speaking. I did see some movement in Parliament just now, so I thought maybe she had begun to wrap up or wrapping up. Um, so hopefully we'll still be having her on. And uh, we'll be looking at a number of things tonight. Uh, I was listening to the show last night and got the biggest surprise of my life when I, I heard about the Chinese Communist Party, not meeting with the Barbados government, but meeting with the Barbados Labour Party. That is deeply concerning and troubling. I, I, I don't know why I have reached out to several of the stalwarts of the party to get their input as to what is the in, you know is going on here. But it would it ought to be of concern. When a political party in Barbados meets with one of the most totalitarian autocratic governments on the planet, um, I think you would have heard that today or yesterday, um, President Putin was elected for a fifth, fifth consecutive term with a 85%, uh, I think they said 85% majority support. Um, of course, the Chinese Communist Party has nothing like that. Um, and it would it should concern us as Barbadians. I don't care. Uh, which government party you're talking about it should concern Barbadians it's okay, I don't even want to say it's okay to get funding from China because funding from China has
shown to be very, very concerning in a lot of other parts of the world. We're even as close as Jamaica. Um, and we can have persons who are in Jamaica make comments on that. But to have the meeting with one of our political parties is deeply concerning. And I, as a former member, I was a member of the Barbados Labour Party. Uh, my family has been associated with the Barbados Labour Party for many years. I want to know what is the intent, what is the purpose of the Barbados Labour Party meeting with the Chinese Communist Party. I want to know that. If it was the government, there would be a different type of questions. But when it, you are speaking out to a political party, meeting with the Chinese Communist Party and high-level officials in the Chinese Communist Party, not with the ambassador, but high-level officials of the Chinese Communist Party, that is deeply troubling. But we'll get into that further on tonight as the show goes on. Good evening, Beverly Prescott and the Anthony Olivier. Greetings from New York City. Don't forget, if you're coming on from some other part of the world, let us know. I, I think I see Tyron Nurse. You're joining us from Calgary, Alberta. Thank you so much uh, for being with us. Um, yes, uh, blah, 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 Cecilia. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Tony Paris, good night to you. If I've called your name already, I, uh, I forgive me. Natasha Hope, good night to all the patriots. Yes, absolutely. A pleasure to have all of you with us tonight. Now, I'm going to go straight into the plane of the national anthem because we do want to take in a bit of what the uh, of what the prime minister is saying in her budget speech. Uh, we do want to take in a bit of that. Oswald Newton, P three thirty six, Shekinah Wesleyan. Good night to you, um, William Anderson Gitz, uh, Gittings. Good night to you as well. So we're going to take this opportunity to to go into the plane of the national anthem so that we can join uh, the Barbados Parliament. And uh, here, maybe toward the end of the Prime Minister's budgetary proposal. So, shall we stand to attention and uh, have our national anthem played? <laughs> Goodness gracious me. Thank you so very much to those persons, the band and the singers, the national anthem of Barbados. Now, we're going to take you over uh, for a few minutes to the prime minister's budgetary proposal. Um, get your pens and your papers out to make your notes. 
that you will be able to put your comments in uh, the chat here um, and also on, well, I believe when they come up here, they'll come up on YouTube as well. All right, so here we go. We're going into her presentation in the Parliament of Barbados. And please let me know if you're hearing her a okay. To this time of construction. And as a result, sir, we had to use labor from Barbados, teach them, get them accustomed. And what we did was to recognize that that obviously would have been more expensive than the labor coming in, who knew it, who would be more efficient in its application initially, and who clearly were working for, 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 for not as expensive rates as Bajans. Mr. Speaker, I asked on an independent, reputable quantity surveying firm called BCQS, conducted an assessment on behalf um, for the government and the senior minister for infrastructure, ensured that this was done. And this independent assessment demonstrates that whilst the costs were over the original budget, over budget, they were in line with market expectations in Barbados compared to the resources that would have been used out of China. In October last year, and again in January this year, so I told you we had some difficulties. And that is why I'm addressing them frontally now for the country. The truth is, Mr. Speaker, we have also had problems, as I said, with hope. And therefore, the structure and the systems in there were not sufficient. And we are now in the process, we believe, of completing those systems and the employment of persons necessary so that we can roll out an industrial scale in terms of procurement, in terms of surveying, in terms of construction, in terms of every aspect of getting a house up and running. Because this is not as simple as building five or ten houses when you are looking to build the kinds of numbers that we want to build. Mr. Speaker, it includes also the execution of mortgage transactions. I am sorry to say that there is a particular financial institution um, that was sitting down on, on, on mortgages for how long, Minister? For almost six months, for over a hundred and something of them sitting down there waiting for that. I believe, sir, that we are in a better position to start to ramp up now. And the truth is, why do we need to do it? These houses are for our people. The hope houses in particular, we've agreed that two thirds of them should go to public servants, the same teachers, nurses, and policemen, other public servants, because customs officers, immigration officers, all of them. Once you are earning $5,500 or less outside of allowances, you should be able to benefit from a hope house. There are also a number of private sector providers who are equally promising to ramp up significantly. Mr. Speaker, in the last two years, 1,119 houses were built and delivered to homeowners. At the very minimum, sir, what we did in two years, we must now be doing in one year. And therefore, it is not beyond our reach, but we need to be able to make it happen. As I said, am I happy with the performance? No. But do I believe that we are on a path that will allow us to get there? Yes. And Mr. Speaker, we believe that that joint venture program with the private sector as well, that the, um, is being embarked with, on by the Ministry of National Housing, will also open another 2,561 housing solutions separate from the hope matters and the matters being dealt with with the traditional private sector on their own lands. Those 2,561 housing solutions will be predominantly in St. Peter, not St. Peter, in St. Philip and St. Lucie. And Mr. Speaker, St. George, I believe, also is not doing badly with respect to those housing. The Honourable Member for St. George South is the Minister of Housing. Mr. Speaker, in addition, we will have to go back to some multi-story buildings. And I haven't put it in here, but I'm satisfied that we cannot, Barbados is land scarce, and we cannot do this only on the basis of single dwellings. I like single dwellings, but the truth is we can't do it only on that. And therefore, we will have to be able to go back to some of them. I look forward, therefore, to significant progress in the next year and years going forward in what I believe will be that housing revolution. Mr. Speaker, the truth is 
that there's a lot of positive and transformative things happening in this country. There is, however, a core of people, and why listen to me carefully, some of whom would not ordinarily be friendly with one another, but all of them have their own agendas and are brought together only by a common hatred of the Barbados Labour Party and its leader, who see nothing good in anything that we do. The voices of these persons have been amplified by technology. They make it their business in podcasts and marches to specialize in fake news, false facts, and scaremongering. At every step, they have suggested that this government intends and is doing the country actual harm, and Bajans have something to be afraid of. The operatives in this coalition of convenience, as I call them, said that the emergency powers legislation, AG, would be necessary, that was necessary, sorry, during COVID, would be abused by this government to take away people's property and to do other nefarious acts. According to them, sir, the COVID vaccine was not a vaccine at all, and it would stop women from getting pregnant and was going to wipe out the country's black population. Mr. Speaker, I still see in pregnant women about the place. I said, COVID, I don't know what is happening or whether those women are just fat. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, they said that the Child Protection Act was a means of ousting parental control and that the IDB survey was a weapon for similar purpose in our schools. After last year's budget, Mr. Speaker, they and their associates were alleging that taxes would be increased in this country and that the economy would go into near collapse, Mr. Speaker. You remember all of this? Instead, Mr. Speaker, the economy has grown and no new taxes were added. Mr. Speaker, their most recent pronouncement is that education reform in their eyes is intended to produce more dunces than the country produces salt bread. Mr. Speaker, this is what we are hearing all the time. And don't forget the Trident ID. They insisted that the Trident ID is to monitor people's whereabouts. Although every child knows that cell phones have GPS and location finders, and every husband and wife know it too. So government does not need an ID card to tell you how it can locate people. What foolishness is this? And instead of saying that the national insurance scheme after the damage done by the Dems, they were insistent that we mashing up the national insurance scheme. When far from that, we restructure it, we put money back into it, and we have it healthy and now playing a role to be able to help all Bajans going forward. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, sir, they allege that Barbados is part of some global conspiracy and that there is religious suppression and governmental dictatorship. Oh dear, Mr. Speaker. Their latest thing is that the cyber crimes bill is intended to silence dissenting voices. Yet they hold their online programs. No fear, no interference. They speak. No fear, no interference. They march without interference. Every other Saturday, you see them all through from Fontabelle, right through Broad Street, turn on the bridge, come right back around, no interference. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> they are freely spewing their conspiracy theories and their untruths. It is you know, utterly fascinating, you know, sir, because although every allegation of theirs has been proven false, they keep going and going and going like the Duracell battery. I can only assume, as I said, that they are so consumed with building a platform for themselves that they are prepared to put the country on a scaffold. I'm not getting in that. <laughs> we will see. All who have eyes and ears can listen. They can look and they can reason for themselves as to who really has the best interest at heart of this country and of Bajans. 
And who is using that personal platform, as I said, for promotion while really creating that scaffold? It is a serious thing. Bajans know who clean up the South Coast. Go and ask them. Bajans, commuters, appreciate who get them the electric buses. Huh? The Bajan public experiences that they've had with the improved garbage collection and the fancy garbage cans that they got now that you could tell when somebody thief it where they carry it to. The civil servants of this country know who gave them three salary increases in six years. While the last government gave them one in ten, and who was responsible as well for their appointments. The poor and the vulnerable can tell you in this country where they got the financial support and training. They can also tell you what is the position with the trust loans. Something that they get that nobody never look at them and trust them with nothing before. Not even a good word. Mr. Speaker. The people at the lower end will understand and tell you how much a minimum wage has made a difference in their lives. All the recent graduates from the University of the West Indies can tell them and go on their program and tell them, including one that they have all the time, who needed every extra year to pass his exams and therefore needs to be able to ensure that we have free education at the university. But he ain't doing it in the three years. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, sir, if he is honest, he will tell us that. Small business people are now getting NIS benefits for the first time and the self-employed that I announced today. And our entrepreneurs are obtaining tangible support. The vendors who used to be subject to criminal penalties in this country, criminal convictions, can tell you the difference that this government makes in their lives. And we are now about to roll out the vending zones, starting in Redmond's Village for them and moving across the country. Because we don't believe that vending should take place in a disorderly way. We want the traffic to go to them. Mr. Speaker, all of Barbados who got property, who last year, benefited at the end of the budget from not having to pay a red cent in taxes on land tax under $300,000 can tell you what a difference this government is making in their lives. Mr. Speaker, sir, all of the people who earn $25,000 and under who are the ones benefiting from the reverse tax credit that you could only get before when you are earning $13,000 and under, this government giving all of them $1,300 when the year come. Mr. Speaker, the ones earning between $25,000 and $35,000 that have not paid a cent in income tax because when they pay it, they get it back at the end of the year for the last four years. Mr. Speaker, and every other income taxpayer in this country, that is what this government is doing for you, sir, at all levels. Mr. Speaker, sir, all who benefit from the cost of living shielding. Mr. Speaker, sir, all who benefit, I can go on and on, but I ain't gonna spend all night in here. Suffice it to say that the list is so long that we will be in here for another few hours. No, Mr. Speaker, no. They remind me of people who want to call, see something beautiful, and want to insist that this is a desert and a wasteland. And because they say it and repeat it enough, they're like Trump over and over and over and over. That some people will eventually say, oh yeah, that looked like a wasteland in truth. Don't mind that the pocket's getting full and don't mind that they're benefiting in every possible way. Mr. Speaker, suffice it to say that the public will judge some people's foolish talk against this government's promises made. But promises have been kept by this government for the most part. We have not been perfect. The cabinet will tell you and the members of parliament will tell you that very often I can sometimes be very difficult and they know it, not because I want to be, but because I believe that we have an obligation to the people of this country. And there are some people who will not be happy about everything, but if you start to find out the full story, there's usually more in the mortar than the vessel. You mind, I, uh, enough of that for now. Sir, we are committed to the successful delivery of all that we do, from our climate investment plan 
on our broad policies and capital projects. We recognize that there is investment in the sustainable areas of this country and that we can do for the future of this nation many things. One of our targets is to ensure that all that we do are aligned with our resilience targets. Mr. Speaker, as a result of our commitment to see delivery in all of these things that we've talked about, I'm asking, sir, that a task force be set up within government to track processes and progress and to remove bottlenecks across the system. We will work with the New Growth Council to help in that area. These measures will be implemented to ensure that we improve implementation across the public service. And I've already appointed senior ministers who, along with the Deputy Prime Minister and the Directors General, are charged with being able to see that we remain focused on the delivery, on the oversight and the accountability. And when things go wrong, we don't tell you when they go wrong, like how oh, I'm not happy with what happened with the housing. When things go right, I can tell you when they go right too. Because this is not an exam. This is life. This is real, real life where people live and people die and people rise and people fall. And we have to deal with the circumstances as we find it, where people stay and people leave. All kinds of things happen. This is an ab ambitious agenda, sir. By any stretch of the imagination, even in the best of times, far less in the challenging times that we have. But I want to remind you, sir, that Barbados now is a buzz. And don't let nobody fool you. Barbados is a buzz with activity, confidence, and positive economic indicators. The government's agenda for transformation that moved this country was mission critical. We went through mission stabilization. We're going to mission transformation, as I told you. And, and, and look at what we've achieved as a government. Very quietly, you know, this government undertook pension reform and reform of the NISS, which is now the NISSS. Very quietly. The child justice and the child protection legislation gone to the committees, expected back here in the parliament, Mr. Speaker, any minute now. The vending legislation where decriminalization happened. We changed what my grandfather and others were trying to change from the 1950s, where poor people in this country get locked up for trying to sell to be able to support the children. Mr. Speaker, the member for St. Michael South is bringing right now to closure the conversion of the welfare department and the child care board into the Department of Family Services, a Family Services Authority that will allow us to be far more nimble and flexible to meet the needs of the vulnerable population. And we are waiting for the poverty assessment survey so that we can even be more, more nimble and laser-like in our support. And I say already that in the one the family initiative, so the education, we can even be the more, health, and more all of those major housing needs will be prioritized in all agencies in Barbados for the most vulnerable families, not for the most partisan alone. No. We have under governance. We are waiting the Constitutional Reform Commission within a matter of months. The Parliamentary Reform Commission has written for an extension until early May. The Thorn Commission on Local Governance is there now for the member for St. Michael South to bring without prejudice. The reform, and uh, Mr. Speaker, all this talk about dictatorship. I am the first Prime Minister to ever reduce the powers of a Prime Minister in this country. I came to office and I had the power to appoint judges and chief justice without talking to a fellow other than to consult and let the leader of the opposition know what he was doing. I came to office in this country and had the right to appoint a head of state, a governor general. That right now abides in the House of Parliament with a two-thirds majority in both houses. The right to appoint judges now belong to a judicial advisory and appointments committee. But you hear people say, this government is full of dictators. That the Prime Minister is a dictator, but the Prime Minister is a foolish dictator reducing powers. They've got to go and learn from Donald Trump. <laughs> what foolishness are you hearing? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Attorney General has shepherded in the largest suite of anti-corruption and integrity legislation in the history of this country of any government. And Mr. Speaker, because we can't do like Elizabeth on Bewitch and twiggle a nose and make something happen overnight, people making noise. 
It takes time to create institutions. Just because you pass legislation does not mean the institution is there overnight. You have to look at the structure. You have to look at the staffing. You have to look at the salary. You have to look at who can serve. You have to put all of that in place. You have to look at where you're going to accommodate them. That invariably the Civil Aviation Authority, the member for St. Michael West Central, who has Well, <laughs> Caswell, Caswell, I'm laughing. I'm, I'm going to tell you why I'm laughing. You, you give, give me a minute. Let me tell you why I'm laughing. I'm going to come back to a few things. First of all, I really want to thank the Prime Minister for the free PR for this show. It's, obviously, she is in touch with this show, and I'm, I'm so glad, so glad she's been in touch with it because I've heard her use the phrase over and over for the entire uh, evening. We have listened to you. <laughs> so I, I think she has been listening to this show or or her lackeys have been listening to the show, um, this Marcia Week show. Um, and yeah, we, we are seeing a lot of comments. Listen, one of the things I've learned down through the years is to listen to my opposition. Uh, we're opposition. You, you have to be able to listen to your to your the persons who are on the opposite divide. That's that's one of the features and beauty of democracy. I know sometimes it's not the easiest thing uh, to tolerate and take on. And, uh, you know, it, it is a challenge in that aspect, but we have to be able to listen. So uh, that is the process we, we engage for the last few minutes. It is clear that she's going to be speaking for another uh, half an hour or more, which makes it, I believe, Caswell, the longest speech in, in the history of budgetary proposals I, uh, that I recall. I don't even recall Tom Adams talking for five hours. I don't recall Arabara speaking for five hours. I stand to be corrected. I wasn't uh, in politics and around the political divide for all of that time, but I don't recall hearing them speak for such a long time. But what my takeaway from this so far is that this is not a budget speech. This is a political campaign. So I believe that we may be hearing the announcement very shortly of a, 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 um, an election. Uh, because what I'm listening to is the kind of budget, budget speech I heard Tom Adams. Not even, well, don't even let me disrespect Tom Adams by comparing this speech to, his, to anything that he would have shared. Uh, but it certainly sounds like a political speech more than it, it sounds like a, a budget. And, and let me just say this. Um, Prime Minister, you need to learn how to uh, address people who don't agree with you. You have been extremely disrespectful and insulting to Barbadians. We are Barbadians. We have a right to speak. And, and incidentally, a lot of the conspiracy theories and untruths you're talking about, we have proven to be true. You want me to start with the IDB survey that you mentioned? We showed that that was not known by the Ministry of Education. We have shown that. We have shown that that was intended to introduce a, 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 a um, uh, what is it that the Americans call it now, gen orientation and gender identity to the children of our country. We showed that. So you are, I, I mean, I can't come on this platform and call you a liar, but clearly you're, you're, you're a stranger to the truth. You talked about the jabs. Of course, you can call the name on the, on the thing there and, and, and uh, YouTube would probably not take your video down. But uh, regarding the jab and pregnancy, again, you are a misinformation individual. The entire world has proven, doctors and, and people who have testified to the European Union and the United States Congress have shown that these jabs have caused women to have premature births, uh, not become pregnant, to, to, to have stillbirths and all the rest of it. So go and do your own research, Madam Prime Minister, and you will discover that what we are saying is true. Clearly, you don't keep in touch with what's going on in the world around you. As it relates to the Trident ID card, we are not so stupid as to think you need a Trident ID card to locate people. We treat it to the fact that the Trident ID card, just like it's happening in the UK at the moment, is going to be used 
to control the financial aspects of people, especially those who disagree with you, especially when compared to what has happened in Canada with Justin Trudeau. Trudeau. When it comes to global conspiracy, we have shown the World Economic Forum, the World Health Organization, who is currently currently trying to get all 190 some members of the United Nations to sign on to documentation that will give them sovereign control of your countries in the next pandemic. You think we don't know what is going on? You're stupid and dumb if you think we don't know. When it comes to the cybercrime bill, uh, it's not even enacted yet. You, you don't even know what bills you have enacted and not enacted so that we are not, we are not, uh, You've had to take it back and you've had to treat in another way to it. And I can go on and on and on myself. I don't have to stop there. And I'm sure, Caswell, you would have a lot to say with regards to that as well. But I'm not going to be taking on uh, the the budget speech tonight um, because I want to, to review it. I want to listen to the entire thing. But clearly, this show has got under her skin. You can tell from the body language and the attitude and the face that this show has got under her skin. And ma'am is going to continue to get under your skin. In case you don't know, we have a march coming up on Saturday and we invite you to it so you can see what is happening in that march. You don't have to send up a drone uh, to, to, to follow us. You can come right on and join us in that march. Uh, as it relates to you being a dictator, we have every reason to think so even now more than ever before concerning considering the fact that your political party has invited high-ranking officials of the Communist Chinese Party to sit down with you at your Labour Party's headquarters facility. Uh, I don't know what you're planning, we don't know what you're planning, but that sure songs that you're, you're looking at some aspects of how the Communist Chinese party operates. So please, don't let's get into this foolishness of, of all of this rubbish again. This, this is not 1997 politics. This is not 2001 politics. This is 2024. The people are more informed. We do not have to be misinformed by you and we do not have to be lied to by you in order for us to know what is going on. We are aware of it. I am sure Kimar will deal with the matter of the housing matters. We have dealt considerably. I'm happy to hear you talk about the water being added to the aquifers will be coming from desalination. I don't know, Caswell, if you realize how she stared away from the jobby water um, with regards to that uh, during the day. Um, you know, but uh, she, she spoke about a couple of of other things controversial. She spoke about education, con about the controversial aspects. That was her own words. The controversial aspects. And so she's extended that aspect of the educational reform from 2025 to the end of 2026 because of the educational uh, controversial aspects. So please, Madam Prime Minister, don't come to us with this rubbish. Please, be a little more dignified in this presentation that you're giving and i'm going to really control myself because if i if i if i, I felt i would go into each one of the areas that i noted here and show the, who the liar is and who the truth tellers are who the conspiracy theories theories are and please um you know when it comes to references to mr trump don't bring him into this matter at all you can't compare to him in any way, shape, and form with the number of untruths and misrepresentations that we have heard. Uh, so please, don't let, us, don't let us go there, all right? I listened to the show um, last night, um, Caswell, and, and over the weekend. Um, I was troubled, as I shared with Marcy today, with regards to the Chinese Communist Party being in Barbados. They have no right being in this country. They're an authoritarian government. They're not even they're not even allowed in the European Union to speak. Their Justin Trudeau was booed there in the European uh, in the European Union uh, 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 conference um, that he was there in. And and for us to have the Chinese Communist Party high level officials in Barbados meet him with the with the Barbados Labour Party uh, uh, um, uh, party a political party is concerning. Right, so I, I'm, I'm just going to rest myself there. I don't want to use the word on this platform, 
But I found it interesting that nobody challenged the Minister of Health concerning the adverse effects. You see, this government doesn't want to admit to the truth of the adverse effects of the jab that have affected our people, killed some of our people, caused some of our people not to become pregnant, caused them to have miscarriages. This is the testimony of the people in the world, not just here in Barbados. We have people here in Barbados who have been in touch with us, who have told us about their family members dying, etc., etc., uh, with regards to this jab. So don't come to us with foolishness. We have doctors McCullough and, 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 and uh, uh, Dr. Maloney and, and others, the Nobel Prize winners from Germany and Denmark, who have given uh, uh, lies to the misinformation that has been shared with regards to the jab. And you have the audacity to come here and talk foolishness about allegations proven to be false. On the contrary, our allegations have proven to be true. And the Barbadian public have heard what you said. The Barbadian public is hearing what we say. And the Barbadian public will decide who is telling the truth and who is a liar. And I will leave the Barbadian public to do that. But certainly, Gazo, this sounds more like a political speech to me. And so we had better prepare for an election within the next couple of years because this is the kind of speech I, I hesitate honest to God I hesitate to even say this is the kind of speech that you would hear coming from um, don't let me compare it from a prime minister when they are preparing for an election and let's let me get under her skin a little bit more she talked about what they've been doing well madam prime minister that is your job we pay you for it out of our taxes. You're supposed to do all that you are talking about. You're supposed to do. That's your job. So if you're reporting to us today on the job that you're supposed to be doing, that's what you should be doing. So don't come to us telling us what you've done and what the government has done and all that rubbish. We pay you for that job. That's your job. And if you don't like it, let me say it again. That's your job. That's the job of every minister. That's the job of the government. So don't come to us with foolishness telling us what you've been doing. That's what we pay you to do. Just like anybody else working in any other company has been paid to do their job. Mr. Franklin, welcome. Welcome. And yeah, I am, the PM is shouting at Barbadians, so I'm shouting back at her so that she hears that Barbadians can equally shout. Well, I'm not one of those Barbadians that will shout at her. Somebody, somebody casual puts in the chat. Reverend Fernando, let anybody take away your cloth. I am not a man of the cloth. I don't. I don't wear cloth. <laughs> I don't wear cloth. Sorry. I wear shirt and pants. And when I have a proper service, I am either in a formal shirt, that suit, or in a suit. I don't wear any cloth. I am very much male, and I don't want to look like a like a Jewish uh, a Jewish high priest. Those are the old days. Uh, I'm not, that's not part of my culture. So I don't. And they're not taking away my cloth. I just happen to speak very passionately and very firmly. And I just want the Prime Minister to know that we are capable of raising our voices as well. All right. Mr. Caswell, Mr. Franklin, so good to see you, well, my friend. I, I am luckier than you. I am, I, 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 I am luckier than you. When I, when I um, <laughs> joined the March week show, I realized that you were rebroadcasting the Prime Minister. I saw a few minutes of her ranting. Yeah. I saw the aspect where she was talking about she lowered her power and she the power to appoint judges now go you have to go before judicial appointments committee that is absolute rubbish they did it yes but the act did not take the power away from her she that committee now advises her and and what they have done is to go ahead and appoint judges even without that committee sometimes because we had judges appointed recently that did not have an interview because she still has the power she didn't take away the power from herself you know she just um put a little facade around it to give the impression she still has to consult with the opposition even when those people make the recommendations and but if they make the recommendations wait a minute, wait a minute Caswell. Uh, the first thing is you, you you can't be telling the truth if you talk about consulting to the lead with the leader of the opposition when there's been no opposition since 2018. what leader of the opposition is she consulting mm -hmm. with no, well, and, the no, well, the, the, the constitution provides that if there is no uh, leave the opposition to consult, she'll do it on her own. Exactly. But, so, she's, without, so she's um, expressing a mistruth when she talks about consulting with the leader of the opposition. 
There has uh, the, been no the, 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 in parliament. the thing here is that she has not taken away any power from herself. She what hasn't. she has done is to give the facade of taking away the power from herself. That's one of the aspects that I heard. I heard some other things that she was jumping and keeping noise about, and most of which were not true. And I, but I don't normally listen to her. It's only because I joined the show and I, and she was there, and I didn't know when you were going to cut away and come well, to the I'm show. Glad, so that I'm is why I am. I'm glad that we joined with her for the last few minutes there that we heard for ourselves uh, what she had to say about this show. And, and I'm well, happy... But you have, to, you have to tell me. You have to tell me because I, as a rule, I don't listen to her. I, I hate to see people I don't, I don't lying to me. I know they're lying to me and I sit down and, and, and enjoy it. And I know she's as genuine as any $3 bill you can find in your wallet. So I, I, I don't um. I don't make it a rule to listen to her. If there were budgetary proposals, you know, um, I would go. Uh, I would go. I would. I would then look at them and see what taxes they are imposing. I understand that she is now deceiving the people of Barbados yes. to suggest that there were not going to be any new taxes. But they're going because to be increasing she, rates. But they're going to be increasing rates. They're going to increase the rates. Because let me tell you, during the estimates, this big book that you see me always have here, yes, sir, I keep it as a companion. That book says that there is an estimated excess of total expenditure over current revenue. That is what the budget is supposed to do fix that. So if you get there and rent for God knows how many hours. Close, because close four hours and, f and f about 40 minutes. Well, we know that she ain't finished yet. So that's why I don't know how long. I, I, cause she might talk for six. But the thing is, a budget, and this is what the legislation asks to, to do. The budget is to put tax measures in place to raise that deficit, the, the money in that deficit, because the government wants to spend four billion six hundred and sixty seven million six hundred and eighty seven thousand three hundred and four dollars that is what they project to spend but according to them they are only going to raise three billion seven hundred and twenty four thousand three hundred and sixty two dollars no, sorry three billion seven hundred and Twenty-four million three hundred and sixty-two thousand six hundred and thirty-seven dollars. That is what the government is expected to rake in with the current taxes that we have. Okay, but as I told you, there is a, a deficit of almost one billion dollars that the budget is supposed to close. So if she don't do it now. By taxes, she got that by borrowing. Or by, so we can, we, 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 or by increasing uh, rates. Or by increasing the rates. But the rates should have been increasing the budget. So people will know what they are going to come. Because she should have said, look. Because in the budget, the Prime Minister can make the, the announcement from midnight to night. Or from March the 31st. Or from July. Right? This is when we can raise these rates. It is incumbent upon her to be honest with the people of Barbados and not trying to deceive us and shouting and think that shouting can make somebody think otherwise. She is, she is being deceptive when she says, oh, she's just going to think of the rates and that kind of nonsense. No, she the budget is provided for that. That is what the budget is all about, to raise taxes in the, in, in, in the, the session where there is a... Um, an excess of total expenditure over current revenue. That is what is projected. And the budget is supposed to fill that gap. Where are the measures to fill that gap? This is not a budget. This is a prime ministerial rant. Well, that's why I said that we must be preparing for a general election because what I heard was a political was a political speech. Um, you know, I, I, I listened to I was listening to it for most of the afternoon. I was on the road 
Uh, I couldn't take notes. I couldn't write things because, of course, I was driving most of the time. And I, I kept hearing of all kinds of investments, kept hearing of all kinds of amount of monies uh, that are being uh, uh, going to be spent here and going to be spent there. And, and I, was, I was waiting to hear, okay, you're spending all this money and where are you getting it from? Uh, where are you raising it from? But even more so to me than that was you're spending all this money, but what is the revenue benefit to Barbadians? What is generated for the benefit of us as a people? You talk about investment, people coming into the country. You talk about uh, improving the skill capability of the people. How are you quantifying that? Uh, you know, and um, when you look at, at, at the, and I listened to, I listened to her, her assessments of the uh, population di uh, distribution of Barbados, where she was saying that sometime, I think in 20, sometime in 20, 20, 35 or something like that, Barbados would be 60%, people would be 60% over the age of 35, something in that ballpark. She mentioned about uh, how uh, over 25, 30% of the people today are in excess of 60 years old. And so I'm asking, uh, what are we doing to generate um, not just skills, because when I hear skills, I hear people talking about all of this technology. That's all I'm hearing, technology, technology. But what about the carpenters, the masons, the plumbers, the, the agriculturalists, the farmers? They're not skilled people. I heard no mention of those types Pretty, of areas of skills. Yes, yeah, yeah. You know, she just wants to fill up the place with talk. Because she wants to say, I talk for five hours, and Ralph can't talk for five hours. That's what she wants to do. She wants to show people that she can talk in long, but she's talking a lot of rubbish. You see, the, 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 the aspect that you just raised with, um, it, by 2035, this age group, that was an actuarial, that was out, came out of actuarial review in 1989. Oh and nothing new. So she ain't telling about anything that, that they already know. This, this, the, we, that is what we now used to fix the national insurance scheme back then. When he took, met, took steps to raise the, um, the contributions, lower the rate of return to the people because then your, your um, pensions came down a little bit. And that was supposed to fix the national insurance problems that we had. And it was working. The national insurance was then generating um, a lot of surpluses that they were, they were able to invest because of one author's intervention now come along she write off the money that the government that the last administration was borrowing and and if you listen to the last administration what they were saying makes sense if you go outside and you borrow money you gotta look for foreign exchange to pay back and we were earning a lot of foreign exchange and the last administration decided that they are not going to lay off men because they left some people too, but they didn't want to have any more. And they decided to keep the people working and they borrowed the money from national insurance because you could not get the national insurance money invested overseas because there was, um, I don't know for whatever reason, there weren't a lot of people willing to give um, the government of, of, of rather national insurance favorable terms on their investments because the market was saturated. And so she then wrote off a billion dollars, $1.3 billion or something like this. And that, that is the money that the, that was borrowed from the national insurance to pay public servants and to build these buildings. Now that the national insurance, for instance, they have gone and used the national insurance money to build fire stations, Warren Tower 1, Warren Tower 2, um, the Boabab uh, building. And Warren Bottom that is making people sick. So she 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 just does I feel she has a lot of information and if she strings them together and shout people will think that she's making a good speech because that's what she is doing. It cannot stay what little bit I heard and, and that's because you you start the show and put her on. And I wouldn't have heard any because I just can't <laughs> tolerate the noise her noise in my ears. You know, um, you know they say um, I keep noise I'm nice too, but I keep noise for a productive purpose. You know, and there's a there's a the rather they could call it. It says avoid loud and aggressive persons. They're the vexation to the spirit. 
Desert well, she vexes my spirit every day. She starts shouting things, so I get. I I don't listen to her. Yeah, well, you know, I have a very calm spirit when I when I choose yeah. to be. Yeah, and uh, yeah, ministry ministry has taught me to be very honest. I I was like you, but ministry has taught me because even within the context of church circles, we have we have opposition. Huh? We have far too much politics within the context of the church, but that's not the subject. Uh, but I've learned down through the years, especially from a great teacher, my mother, who taught me how to listen to people, even when, uh, you know, the scripture talks about only a fool utters all of his, of, his, of his mind. And she taught me how to listen, because in listening, you get to see the full extent of the fool. Um, so I, I, have, I have learned how to tolerate uh, some of these persons, and, and uh, of course, my greatest example of that is Jesus himself, who listened to a lot of rants and ravings, you know, and never changed his position. So I've, I honestly have I've grown to, to, to be able to do that. Um, I didn't put her on tonight to, to put anybody, because I saw a few people tonight. <laughs> I saw a few people tonight, guys, where they could not cope with her. And they said they were going off on to... We were finished, but uh, I put her on tonight. Just I, I had a feeling that somewhere along the line, I really, I really didn't expect it, but I just had a feeling that somewhere along the line she would have, she would have hit out at this show, and she did not disappoint me. But I wanted to, everybody to hear it for themselves, so that when we start to talk, people would know we're sharing the truth. Now she is, she is suing Marcia, so she should not be discussing anything about this show. You know, and I think it's 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 improper. But she was saying she never called the show's name. You know, she talked. No, 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 no. But you see, the thing is, really people are not stupid. Really you know, like for instance, you cannot, <laughs> you can say some things, and if people know that they're talking about you, you're still defaming them. You know, you don't have to call the person's name. If I say the prime minister is an idiot, do only got one prime minister. I don't have to say me a motley. If you if you see what I mean. Yeah, so by 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 saying by 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 saying something and and making and letting people be aware, or you can come to the conclusion that it is this person. You still you you still defame them if it is a defamation. You know, so she she. But I think she should go back to law school and finish law school, and yeah, or finish her pup or finish her pupillage. You and and and, and 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 learn and learn something about the law. That tell her put some my tail for saying so too. You know, um because law is not about just about going and passing an exam if you pass it at all. It is also about in England where you have to go through something they call pupillage. People they call it the sixes. You do six months studying behind a law another a senior lawyer, and then you got six months going to court with that CM lawyer before the lawyer would be able to tell the the, the, the system, oh yes, this person is good enough to practice law in England, and she hasn't done that. <laughs> so I can understand why, I can understand why she she she's out there not observing the niceties of the law because she didn't go through the the, 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 the complete process. I see some somebody. I got to put this one up for you to. I got to put this one up for you to see. Um, all right, let me see if I can find this one, Caswell. Yes, yeah, but I said, why does she not write off poor people want her raise? No, but you know, you, you, I, um, look at it. Look, and in the, in the, in the, she made people knights and all kind of stuff just after writing off their, their arrears for taxes. People who hadn't paid taxes um, from 1968 to 2000. Talk about them things. She, you know, she talked about, this is what we do. Talk about the things that she did. She write off taxes for people who refused to pay any income tax between 1968 and 2000. You know how long that is? And and then she ain't, she ain't, she ain't trumpeted that and, 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 and stamp again those fools to thump the table to show that she is doing something. No, she's not doing that. So she, she is very selective in what she wants to talk about. And, you know, like, when you go to court, they say, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but. 
Well, the Prime Minister is telling the truth, the half truth, and everything but the whole truth. You see, she, but this this is corn for the yard folds, you know, like they know they will jump up there and keep noise, and the yard folds will get some ammunition that they will go on brass stacks tomorrow and keep noise about. They are, they are getting their instructions now. I, I, I told you already that they are, what she does is that. Uh, what the Babylonist Labour Party has been doing over the years is that the people occupy the calling show, talk about anything. Because if you own the bus, can't get on to, to attack us. And that is their that modus operandi. Uh, can I have no tell me some big words? I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. Uh, you know, I, I know, I don't know what that word means. Here's an old Sony is, is old school. <laughs> yes, you know, and she's correct. I know what I mean, though. <laughs> you see, but she she is she is vacuous. She doesn't have a lot of substance, and that is why she cannot turn up in the estimates because she cannot answer questions. And that thing that she is doing now, right? Nobody can ask a single question. None. That is a ministerial speech. A ministerial. So when the minister make a ministerial statement, it is not debated. So she can get up and she can talk all over her face. Nobody can challenge it. And if she had raised taxes and things, the taxes would have been raised from tonight or tomorrow, whatever she says. But no, she wants to deceive us. She wants to trick us into believing, oh, I do the no tax budget. But then can come back a couple months down the road and put the taxes by it. The, 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 the dangerous thing about that is this. If you have the opportunity to raise taxes from the 1st of April. Let's say you want to raise a million dollars. And you started from the 1st of April. You're going to be, you will have 12 months to raise it. So the impact will not be as great on the people as if you delay it because you don't want to believe that you raise it in the budget. And wait two or three months down the road and then have to raise it and then have no to raise that same million dollars in nine months. So she is doing she's gonna be doing harm to people that wasn't necessary just because she wants to do some nonsense that to make it look that she she didn't have a no tax budget. She has a no tax budget? No 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 not really because then she the taxes will come. The increases in taxes will come or she has to borrow that billion dollars no, the, the, no. The, you have to get it from somewhere you no, have to no. get it from somewhere you either raise it in taxes or you get it from the Chinese that's where I had them at, um, yeah. at, at, at Robert Street at Robert Street but mm -hmm. listen let me let me run let me run a couple of logical things by you uh, for a minute because I think we, we have a lot more logic, a lot more common sense and education. Um, yes, uh, Adrian, I'm, I'm looking at it right now, and uh, I see 151, 147 people in the live chat uh, for the Prime Minister's budget and 1,022 here mm -hmm. on our show. I, I don't, I, I leave that for anybody to draw their uh, thing. But listen to me. Uh, you know, I listen. I had a conversation this afternoon with someone at one of the tourism tourism um, facilities and institutions, and we were talking about the whole aspect of um, of the aging population of Barbados. You know, people are getting older. There's a smaller percentage of the younger people, uh, those persons who are 35 years and on and so on. And the whole question of of, of um, she was talking about how uh, you know a couple of years ago a few years ago Barbadians were having 10.5 children per thousand or something of that nature and I made the point but Barbadians are not going to be having a lot of children now because the cost of living in Barbados is so high and it costs more for a family to eat healthy in Barbados than to eat junk I can walk into the supermarket and and that's where people shop I'm not going to be uh, uh, cast any aspirations upon the Brighton market, the Barvin market or anything or cheap site, but we go into the supermarket and I can tell you cauliflower, broccoli cabbage, carrots are very expensive compared to mac and cheese or, or catelli or anything like that. Oh, ramen. 
or ramming or anything. Or a plastic or ramming that they got. If, what the prime, if the prime minister was serious about reducing the cost of living in Barbados, she should have reduced the VAT from 17.5% back to 15 because when the former government raised it, they campaigned against the increase. And when they came to office, they have done nothing to decrease the increase in VAT. If she had a concern about the high cost of living in Barbados, she could have lowered the VAT in this budgetary speech. Freddie, I, I don't want um, you to go off of that point. The VAT was supposed to be raised for a short period of time. Yeah, okay? that's correct. Short period of time. That's what they told us. And it remains. Yep. It now, the NSRL, which was a far better tax, the people in Bridgetown who own the businesses, mostly the white people. Mm -hmm. I've never seen so many white people in one place. I was I, I actually worked in a building next door to a uh, uh, um, thing just on I used to work at White Park Road and the building the first building on Country Road on the left hand side and the right hand side if you turn in from Camno Bank Camno Bank Hall and wait, when wait, I saw wait, the sorry, white people sorry to cross here, to cross here um, Cancel, I apologize just want to address a, a comment here made by Kevin Watson lower the VAT on what food zero rated no when you go in the supermarket check your bill. When you leave the supermarket and you get to the cashier account to check the bill, you will see the VAT on the bill. The VAT is included on the supermarket bill. So please, food is not zero rated. Okay, don't, don't let's go there with that That's at all. Uh, some food items are. Some but... food items are, but not all of them. Because I look at my bill every time I shop at Popular and I can see the difference between the VAT which is supposed to be shown. So please, let, let's, let's be honest. Go ahead, Gazo. You know, um, but when the white people marched, I, I too, I've never seen so many white people in one place. They were out there and when they came, I was in my office because the way they called me and asked me to demonstrate, I said, listen to me, I am not marching no white people to bring this, this government. Yes, I want them to come down, but I am not joining white people to do it. If we want them to be able to do it ourselves, and you should see them coming back after the march. All them red is cherries. That never went to the sun to do any work at all in the sun. But they come back. And the, the, among the first things they did in Parliament was to, look, was to get rid of that NSRL to please the people who gave them campaign contributions. Not please the people that voted for them. Please the people who gave them money for their campaigns. So don't tell me. You know that she that she is interested in, the, in, in in um taking care of the poor people in this country. She is not. If she was interested in taking care of the poor people, she would stick around here and mind her business and and try to find ways to fix the problems that we are are, are having in this country. No, she's all about the world running around the place like a mad woman. And I, 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 I sound like a mad woman because I'm convinced that she's mad. Because she knows better. You see, I, no, my difficulty with the Prime Minister is, is simple. I, I don't like liars. But sometimes a fellow might lie. And he believes what he's saying is the truth. I can forgive a fellow like that. At the time when you were saying it, you know that it was, it, you believe what you were saying was the truth. That, I, I, that is understandable. But the Prime Minister is saying things like the, the same thing with the, the judicial appointments. That is only half the truth. And not, not even half it, another about a quarter. The, she, what she is saying, she knows it is not correct. But she's saying it nonetheless. She's saying it for an audience. She's saying it for impressions. This, how many people in Barbados are suffering? She thought people pocket for the money, but I didn't want the people in me, you know. And certainly not the people that passed by my office uh, begging me the day I come. So she in telling you the truth. She just trying to give you the impression that when she say it, it is so. You no, know? when she say, it, we have to sit down and analyze what she's saying and determine if it is so because mm -hmm. she has not been telling the truth consistently for a long time. Now, let me, let me just address this matter of VAT on food very quickly. I'm, I'm looking at my popular bill. Okay, you, you can see that. You see that there, Caswell? That's popular, mm -hmm. right? Okay, this is what I bought. Because some, some 
um, nonsensical statement being st st shared there about caviar. And this is my bill. Cheese, sugar, peanut, bar, ginger beer, uh, reduced fat milk, salt bread, uh, some chips, yogurt, fruit, toilet paper, um, a, a bag, um, ketchup, uh, th those kind of things. My total bill was $52.48. The vatable amount was twenty-eight dollars and six cents. You heard the you heard the items I just called? Ketchup, butter, fat free milk, that bread, salt bread, a grapefruit, uh, and so forth. Those are the things I have just called. I haven't called caviar, salmon, or any of those things. I have called ordinary foods that we pick up in the supermarket. I paid four dollars and ninety-one cents in VAT. So please, don't try to come on this show and educate me on any matter to do with food. I shop every week, sometimes twice a week, and I know that food is vatable. There are certain things that are not vatable. Food is vatable. But one of the things, if I recall correctly, don't we pay, don't we pay a VAT on, on, um, on fuel? Uh, don't we pay a VAT on fuel, Caswell? Yes, we do. How, what, do the, what do the distributors of food use to carry the food to the supermarkets. Can you tell me, Caswell, what do they use? Uh, she said that when Elizabeth Twinkle her nose, and it's going to be rich. They, they Elizabeth, use, Elizabeth Montgomery. Yeah, they use... Uh, the they, they, use they, use, they use magic. They use magic. Rich okay. craft. I don't know that model. I, I don't because know that model, the, so. it can only be that, it can, because she is saying that, you know, the, the, so the, 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 the vat and the fuel will be Put on the cost of the of food, course. the item that you you sell to the supermarket, you know she, she she doesn't understand basic things, you know. Of course. So when you have VAT up there, I'm I, I, I Let me let me just say to you that um, I remember as a little boy, my mother used to send me to the supermarket on Saturdays. I used to go to Hill Supermarket or Branch Supermarket in Nelson Street, and we would I would um. My grandmother would be in town and she would help me with these with these goods and then when I went to those two supermarkets, they had transportation to the bus stand. So somebody would see the little boy there over the box and let me live in the bus and thing and then my brothers would meet me at the bus stop because we didn't have a bus pass and through all during the day. And then so we'd have to either go by St. Thomas Church or at Barker's Corner near Pori Spring and and we had to get a box cart to carry home those goods, you know. Enough food and it was less than fifty dollars inside that basket. So when you're talking, when she's talking about like fifty dollars now is, is one plastic bag when you go to the supermarket. Of course. So don't 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 give the impression. I remember when I was going to school and, and I'm talking about the seventies, right? And so we we had um rice and stew at Common America and thing. I used to pay twenty five cents for it. You get rice and stew for anything for twenty five cents now. And it don't used to be a little bit. It used to be enough to to keep me full till I get home and go for my next set of food when I get home. You know, and then there's you see three meals a day and three full meals too because all people to feed you. You know, so when you're given the impression that you are talk compare, you're not comparing like you 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 can't see. I I, I worked for three hundred and fifty dollars my first pay packet. I had enough money. Three hundred fifty dollars. No, I don't know what to do with it. Cause I can't really put gas in your car because the car is all a little Suzuki. Swift holds one hundred sixty dollars when you fill it up, one hundred sixty plus. So, so she can't she can't compare um, apples and oranges and say, but she got so many so many oranges. There's still gonna be apples and oranges. You see, but that's why that's why I raise the matter of the VAT because I you know I'm 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 sitting here at my desk, and I don't think that Chefet is an expensive uh, restaurant to eat at when compared with the Hilton or any of those. So I'm just talking about Chefet that everybody in Barbados goes and shops at. I, Not I me. A, well, I understand your situation. But, but um, I, I got a meal for $19.95. $2.97 is that at 17.5%. So my point is being clearly outlined by the fact that as I pick up a Burger King bill, which is another matter of food where VAT is applied. And the point I'm making is if you want to talk about the reduction of cost of living in Barbados, which Barbadians are calling for, start by putting the VAT back at what it was that you, when in opposition, con 
confronted the then government, especially when they sought to make it a, a, no longer a short-term matter, but a permanent matter. That is what you did as the leader of the opposition. But when you came to the place as prime minister where you possessed the power in a budget to reduce the VAT, you did nothing. And yet you talk to me about having the interest of well-being of Barbadians at heart. Freddie, we have Marcia here with us. So, um. yeah. <laughs> yeah, Marcia, I, I, I just want to say this. Good I, evening. Good it. evening. I am, I am so excited to be on this evening, guys. I am excited. <laughs> I, I was in my class and people were sending me messages. And I'm getting messages even from, um, I got a message from St. Vincent. And somebody said, wait. You are the official opposition in Barbados? Yes, I saw that one. I saw that one. Yeah, somebody they, somebody they said were, that. They were, this person from, um, was watching from St. Vincent. Uh -huh. And they were, they, were, they were saying, wow, I can't believe this. You know, she meaning to spend so much time talking about us. Guys, nearly this, 15 this minutes. <laughs> nearly 15 minutes in a four hour and 45 minute speech. She dedicated nearly 15 minutes to this show. Thank you, Madam Prime yes. Minister. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's wonderful. I think I think um, what I love about it is how is how she was getting riled up. Right? I did. Yes. I didn't hear her, but I saw her picture on the screen as I was passing. You know, I mean, you you could tell. You know, when when something is getting under her skin, or even our very um, you know, our presentation was even yeah, well body language, put together. Body language. Um, body language. Her, she looks like somebody who is going off the edge. And yes. she's, and this is what happens to a dictator, really and Correct. truly. Correct. She did Correct. not expect, she did not expect that she was going to have any kind of dissent in this country. She did not expect it. She doesn't know what to do with when people are going, when people dissent. She doesn't know how to respond. That is why she's not turning up at the estimate. This lady is very insecure she's very thin-skinned she hates any kind of um objection anybody who's objecting to can't her open what it. i want to she say to my it. people who are watching she cannot cope she cannot cope and because cope. of that she is going to unravel if you leave her alone she's going to unravel ralph is going to unravel her this opposition will unravel her let us come out in our numbers guys let us come out in our numbers on on um saturday let me tell you something do not <laughs> allow her bark she's barking she's ranting she's raving and uh, you know what don't let that cause you to stay home don't let that cause not you to all. stay home remember those children at lexavon did she talk to us about that the children who are sick up there at lexavon the teachers the six what about the ones that spring building. up she said nothing about right? the ones All that bring on. Things, these are the things nothing. that we, we are talking about in our march. Okay? And we are not going to sit down and we are not going. We are we are going to be marching. Right? We're going to be marching on Saturday. Make sure you come out. Make sure you come out to let her know that you're not afraid and you're not frightened. You are, you are not afraid. You are not frightened. Yeah? Marcia, I just did on Sunday a message, and the title of that message was, We Will Never Surrender. And it came out as a result of a speech written by, a speech given by uh, to Winston Churchill to the House of Commons on the 4th of June in 1940, when he, the, after the evacuation of the British and French troops from Dunkirk as Germany was sweeping uh, France. And he said, we shall not flag or fail. We shall go on to the end. We shall fight in France. We shall fight on the seas and oceans. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We will never surrender. So Winston Churchill his comments in the House, of, uh, House of, of Commons, his comments in the House of Commons. That is the message we are sending tonight. Yeah. 
and thank you for that. And, and just a reminder of why we are marching. We are marching for the resignation of Prime Minister Mia Motley. That's what we are, we are, we are marching for, and that does not change. That doesn't change. Nope. I thought yeah, when you said you were rant and we one second pass, um, Dr. Perdita. Yeah, go ahead. Go, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Go why we are marching. So we are marching um, about the resi We're calling for the resignation of Prime Minister Mia Amar Motley. And it is a loyal opposition. The people of Barbados, we are dissatisfied with you as our Prime Minister. Your behavior is being very disrespectful towards the people of Barbados. You are mismanaging the country, and we are asking for your resignation, ma'am. Yes, we are saying to you, you do not deserve a, a salary increase. No salary increase. The people of Barbados are saying we're not in agreement with you getting a salary increase. None for you and none for the MPs. No muzzling of citizens. The removal of sections of the cybercrime bill. You know what those sections are. The sections that has been put in by this government to try to muzzle the people of Barbados to ensure that the Barbados Labour Party remains in government for the rest of the existence of this country. And that is what we are fighting against, a one-party government. And we see through the Chinese, um, the, the Chinese Communist Party what you, you and the, what, what the government is trying to do, this Barbados Labour Party government is trying to do. The whole housing project scandal. Imagine what a scandal. We want to know what happened to that $60 million in the HCF fund. Where, where is that? The removal of land tax that has been used, used as a weapon in this country. The external investigation and audit of BRAC. I'm reminding the people of the corruption, the corruption that reached to the highest heavens from the vaccine. You remember the scam? The scam that our own leaders were in, their names were involved in it throughout the region, the Caribbean region. Leaders, the names of leaders in our government. The adverse effect of the joke. That's what we're marching about, that you, Madam Prime Minister promised the people of this country that your government was going to take care of those who were uh, who were affected negatively by the joke. And you know what? To this day, just a few of your friends and those who are who are close to you, it's alleged that those are the people that this government has taken care of. And there are lots of people with high doctor bill. People have lost loved ones. And we have not heard you come out and address that ever since you came out and said you will take care. We have the clip. We have the clip. And we're going to play the clip at the march, Madam PM. We're going to play the, play the clip at the march. So if you're tired, I don't know what your issue is with the march. You will continue to see us. We are going to hit the pavement as often as we can because we have a right to do so. We are we're calling for a better healthcare system, where it's it, once someone knows they they have to go to the QEH, they start getting ner start getting nervous because they don't know if they'll even get a bed. Everybody knows, even people in the diaspora knows, or the healthcare system sucks. It's despicable. It's not for humans. Better working conditions for our teachers and students. That's what we are calling for. Better working conditions for our teachers and students. We're tired of the sick buildings. So we're not going to come off focus. We're not going to lose focus, um, guys. We stay focused. Look at what is rattling her, the marches. So we stay focused. Everybody come out in your numbers. Bigger, 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 bigger than ever before okay come out in your numbers yes um sorry dr freddy i had to get out the reason for the march it's because we're not going to lose focus um you were saying something you're muted as a matter of fact i wouldn't mind if i wouldn't mind if um if uh dave could put that back up again and and and, and let's look at it um you know because you you mentioned the joke there and we were we were being told tonight that we were going around the country conspiracy theories and untruths. 
you know, it's it's amazing. Um, you 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 know, you you look at the marches and you think uh, small. I read somewhere, don't despise small beginnings. I don't know that a river that goes into the ocean begins as a river as big as when it reaches the ocean. It begins way up as a little stream, and then it gathers its strength and power and size as it grows. And that's what's going to be happening with these marches. They're gathering momentum, and the people are increasing in their numbers. We made it clear. We shared concerning the adverse effects. We went through this. The entire world, Marcia, the entire world has now established the fact that these jokes that were used on our people in this country from Pfizer and Moderna and AstraZeneca and Johnson and Johnson have had significantly negative effects, including the uh, causing women not to become pregnant, causing women to lose their children in childbirth, causing miscarriages, causing women's uh, periods to be irregular. That is a fact that has been proven and established globally. We have seen the whole aspect of adverse effects to do with myocarditis, heart attacks, and we can go on and on and on, proven by the experts those people who were testifying before the European Union Committee on the adverse effects of the jab. Even in the United Kingdom, the yellow, the yellow book, I think it's called, or something of that nature, that records the adverse effects. But do we have a record system in this country? We don't know. We have not heard the Ministry of Health admit to anything concerning the adverse effects and come out and tell the people, yes, I remember distinctly, Marcia, that the CDC recommended the withdrawal of remdesivir, remdesivir being used during the pandemic, and it was yeah, still in use. Some of those, some of those drugs, we can't. Yeah. Yes. Uh, sorry, there was some some of them being used, and it was being used still here. Though that's a public matter, to be honest with you, uh, Marcia. It was published by the Fox News, CNN, MSNBC. It was carried in Washington Post. It was carried in, I mean, in the Washington newspaper, the New York Post. Uh, so it is really a matter of, of uh, public information. But we were still using it here at North Point. We talk about the Trident ID. Right now in, 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 in the United Kingdom, with a similar ID, it's not a matter of being able to uh, track location. The minister himself said that that was not the case and then turned around and said that through the use of the Trident ID card, when it is pinned, they would be able to determine when the senior citizens, at what time during the day, senior citizens are going to be are using the public transport. How are you going to do that if you can't track? How stupid do you think people are? And then in, a, in addition to that, we know that the World Economic Forum has cautioned and warned governments concerning the abuse of the ID system, especially when it is pinned and your bank account is pinned to it, uh, in terms of being able to block the access of persons to their, to their monies if they are in opposition uh, to the government. The cybercrime bill, you have it there, is one of the things the, to amend the cybercrime bill. She talked about how we're able to go up and down and do what we have to do. That's because the bill hasn't been passed. You've had to pull it back. That's what you've had to do. And it's because of the exposure of this show you've had to do it. And I ho hope you're watching the show and hearing me tonight. You have had to pull it back and put it into committee where it should have gone in the first place, and where persons who are concerned should have been able to come and air their concerns and express their concerns. Ma'am, you are not Lord God in this country. You are not a dictator in this country. You've been elected by the people of Barbados, and the people of Barbados are saying to you that they are concerned about how you're managing the affairs of this country. You have lost the moral compass of this nation in terms of some of the things that you're looking to sign on to. Don't think that you can come in a budget speech and fool the people of Barbados. Don't, 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 don't try that. Don't try that. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to look through some of these little notes I made here. Um, the whole aspect of speaking to the country. You're now deciding to do that because this show has made the government 
come to the place of speaking properly to the country. That's what this show has done. You can't just go out there and do what you like now. You're going to have to come and talk to us. You're going, And I'm not talking about constituency meeting. That's not what I'm talking about. That's where you can get your lackeys and all of them, and you can control that environment. I'm talking about where you engage the people of this country in environments that are unthreatening and provide them with the facility to answer their questions without a rant and a rave. You see, when people begin to function like that, Marcia, the reality is psychologically they're trying to intimidate a person and trying to shut you up by virtue of how they are aggressive to you. Well, uh, aggression can be returned. Just let me say that. Aggression can be returned. <laughs> Mr. Franklin, want to say something there? Yeah, you know, I, no, I, I, I am, I, I'm trying to not to say I'm appalled because I didn't expect any better, you know. But if the prime minister wants me to shut up and wants to stop me from talking and and stop you, Marcia, from talking and Freddie from talking, there is one simple solution, you know: do the right thing. Correct. If she does the right thing, we would not be criticizing her. Correct. And I have not criticized anything that has been the right thing so far. We started, you remember when we started, we started with National Insurance. Now, Sandra Masai at the National Union of Public Workers opening of their conference, she was the guest yes. speaker and she lambasted them. Yes. On their turf. Uh, I saw that. On their turf. On their turf. Yeah. Saying it was the wrong thing to do. We were saying that from the beginning, Marcia. That's right. On this show. That's right. And That's so, right. but Sandra, Sandra is a Barbadian, and she is, but she is an international trade unionist. She works. Like, I don't remember which agency she works for. I know, but she works in the international scene. She and I train together at shop shops, short conferences, and things. I know her. Yeah. And Sandra is was hardcore in UPW. You couldn't get. Um, that is why they um, brought her there, you know, because they wanted somebody who would sing their tune, so they taught. But she was able to tell them, no, you're doing the wrong thing. And why are they doing the wrong thing? They're doing it because me encouraged them to, to get, get involved in this thing. That is why you will see that even though Unity has the most numbers, and according to the law, it says that we should nominate... Uh, the, the person on the board, they, they didn't want to hear us because they figured that I can come, I won't go. Because it doesn't make sense. So all she has to do is do the right thing. If she does the right thing, and let's say she does the right thing, or something that she believes is the right thing, and she falls short, I can sympathize. But I will not sympathize when she refuses to come to the estimates and speak, and all the time that she should have been speaking, the estimates she won't do it tonight. Because in the estimates, you would have the Lily opposition, because the rest of her people didn't question her, but Ralph would have been there to question her. Right. So she, with the ministerial statement that she's making now, there are no questions. So that's where she could get up and grandstand and shout and, I was going to say prevaricate, but I don't want to do that. But you know what? And she could shout and, and make all of those noises because there is nothing coming back at her. They say, hold a minute, were you saying incorrect? And, and out of challenge or anything that she says, she prefers that. She prefers to, to um, speak. And, 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 that is, you know, and, and that is the word. And the word has been made good. And the word, well, so whatever she says, speak it into being. She is not God. She can't speak anything into being. And if she tries to do that, it will show that she's not only a dictator, but she wants to challenge the Almighty too. She has a law. We have freedom of speech, freedom of conscience, freedom of, in Barbados. She, if she wants to stop it, and mind you, they try to stop it because the cybercrime bill, don't ever forget, read section 19. It tells you, even if it is true or not, and somebody get hurt feelings. Now, if you get hurt feelings because they tell the truth by you, let's look at my nose. Somebody said, Can't we got big nose? They start to pray. That's it. You know what I mean? I hurt my feelings hurt. Nose still big though. 
you know, you know, you, you, you understand where I'm coming from. You that cannot is, prosecute right, some right. person for telling the truth. But in Barbados, mayor wants to shut you up so much that even if you are telling the truth, she don't want to hear it, and she want nobody else to hear it. So when you when she's up, oh, we do all these things. Talk about the things that she did to harm the people of this country. Or, 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 or right now, she has the judiciary on her side. Even though she talk about, she got a judicial appointments committee, but yes, appointments committee, but yet still, the, the people are not going before that committee, and they become becoming judges. And they can name names, but I'm not going to do that right now. And what is she doing? She is giving us the half truth about the things that she did. I want her to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but. And let the people judge for themselves. Don't shout and think because you're shouting, it makes it, it um it makes you right. All shouting will do is to make you hoarse. That is all it will do. And all it will do is to is to stir up the people uh, even more. You know, just Friday, Caswell, just to show you, just to show you what is happening in our world with regards to something like the cybersecurity bill. Just Friday, the U.S. Supreme Court struck down. They struck down, let me make sure I get it right, um, a case that was brought, um, that was brought by, the, by politicians against citizens where the citizens were not permitted to, to, to block or... or comment or so on on their on their uh on their tweets and so forth and the the supreme court ruled and i'm, I'm going to read it the supreme court ruled that uh if a person is acting in his or her official government capacity um they cannot block users or delete their comments which would be considered constitutional constitutionally protected in in some cases they cannot do that the supreme court has just ruled that uh, what we want to do here through the cyber uh, cybercrime bill is that you want to block people from being critical. You want to block people from taking down, I mean, from, from commenting or taking down your comments or whatever it is. That's what we want to do here with the cybercrime bill. And the U.S. Supreme Court has just struck that, uh, that aspect down um, as it relates to some politicians in, um, in, in the United States. I'm looking at the case uh, even as I speak to you. So it is very important that we stand up. I like that caption you have up there, um, um, Marcia. All we have to do is to stand up and the game is over. And that's what the people of Barbados are doing. Yeah. Um, you know, um, someone is sending, uh, somebody was sending something around to me saying that um, the, the Prime Minister, um, it's something from the BLP. They said that the, the Barbados national debt decreased from 2018 to 2024. Um, and it says here that um, it was 18.1 billion um, in 2018, and it's now 14.68 billion um, in 2024. But um, there's an economist who has just um, sent me some correct information and um to to correct the lies okay to correct the lies because in all of this ranting and so on um you know um there's a saying that empty barrels make the most noise and a lot of times when there you don't have uh well somebody put it up when you don't have a lot to a lot to say then you have to be ranting and raving and so on this is why i say to us let us not lose focus let us not let this we're, we're not going to come on here and run we, we're talking truth right and so this is what an economist just sent to me the public debt was 15.84 billion at the end of the financial year 2017 2018 the, right and they're saying that whatever was said that it's not true okay <laughs> She has added the, um, the government's guarantee of other entities' debts, which is a which is a, a wrong thing for her to continue to do, to mislead herself and the public. She's misleading herself, as I tell you. All of this ranting, it's telling us that something is off with our leader. And they said 
the infinite number of things Mia's budget attempts to do without costing could grow all the hairs on your head. <laughs> because it is supposed to be a budget, and we learned on the show that she's supposed to come in and to show us how she's going to fix that. Gap. Correct. Are you right? going to fix there. And um, that, that, that you, don't you know, know, and nothing has been said on nope. how to do it. She said nope. it will be some kind of increasing rate that will come at some other time. But this was a time that we are supposed That's to correct. figure out. So this That's is what, what I'm saying to us tonight. Let us not um, get get caught up with the ranting. What we really need to ask the Prime Minister for is the budget speech. Where is the budget speech? Right? Um, it seems she is she's incapable of understanding the difference between a budget and a manifesto. And tonight we're not sure what what she was doing. It's so much ranting, but we have not heard the budget as yet. The woman's delivery was one big big rant. She seemed out of control. And any normal person watching that tonight, I got the. The message I got from the people watching from different uh, from St. Vincent is that she's she's out of control. It's not surprising, she right? And they said some other things. I want to. She doesn't know the difference between a budget and a manifesto, or between a budget and a presentation prepared for a political meeting. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's a yeah. great comparison. So, so this is this is what. Um, this is what this is what what uh, people with who know who understand how things um are are supposed to uh, how it is supposed to happen. This is not this is not a budget speech, Barbados. So let's let's clarify that we have not yet heard as we as well talk to us on the show how you close the gap, right? We have not yet know it's one billion. I think is it one billion as well that one, then, yes one billion. What? Just short of one billion dollars. The question for Barbadians tonight is have you heard how we're going to close up that gap? How are we going to close that gap? No, we haven't. Of the almost one billion dollars. That's what we need to ask, Miss Martin. Forget about the ranting and so on, because that doesn't affect us. Um, we are here and we want some we have serious questions that we need answers to, and we are going to march. We're going to march. We are not going to be intimidated. I, I we need to get out, put on your clothes, and get down the road and let her know that we need you to tell us. Tell us. What, where is the budget? What are you planning to do? Yes, Mr. Franklin, you were saying something? No, I was saying to you that you was, when you were saying that she doesn't know the difference between a budget and a speech for a, um, a political meeting, I was saying she doesn't know the difference between a budget and a big rock. All she is doing there now is abusing the people of Barbados. She's disrespecting us. She's shouting down at us. She is, it, it is like adult abuse. She is an adult abuser. <laughs> she, she is abusing the people of this country with her nonsense. She should come to us and be respectful. She is working for us. She doesn't sound like somebody's working for anybody. She sounds like an old slave master. And putting you in your place. I know where my place is, and there is not some place where she can send me. She uh, look. When when is she going? That, that, that's the only thing I need to know now, you know. Because she has destroyed everything. Going back to the estimates. She came up with a format for the estimates, which does not allow her ministers to uh, report to the people to parliament and hence the people of this country what they are doing with the money they are getting the public servants to come and answer questions that is not practice in our system but she has done it and continues to do it so when you have, and you have they're going to the well no when you when you go to the well and the minister is there passing off the questions to his 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 um officials no when you are in the estimates and a question is asked of you and you do not know the answer your civil servants are sitting in the private the private gallery 
the public service the public because there are two galleries in the in the in the house well there are three one is the public gallery and then there's a visitors gallery and then there's one where the civil servants sit the minister will call his ps and ask the ps the question the ps will get his people to worship something for him and then he will go back and answer the question that is what they're supposed to do they are not supposed to be speaking on the floor of the house I, I, I can't wait for somebody sue one of them, you know, because they're going to say something that is out of order. And I'm going to explain this very carefully. Anytime you see a state opening of parliament, aside from the drug men and stuff that you have there, you, the speaker goes to the governor general, the queen or president, whoever we have, and say we claim all those ancient rights and privileges and one of those ancient rights and privileges that you cannot be sued for anything that an MP says in Parliament the speaker claims that right on behalf of the elected members of the house now anybody else go in there and talk there those rights were not um, conferred but 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 on the head of state by through, through the speaker to them so they will be liable for anything they say that is defamatory of anybody in the house so if you're watching the estimates and a minister says something and it is untrue it is defamatory of you tough but if a civil servant comes and says the same thing how dare you you don't have parliamentary privilege and you can be sued for it so she is putting public servants at risk that's another thing that she's doing no she comes out here a budget is about raising money how are you going to fix that gap between expenditure and and revenue you gonna expect to spend more money than you earn so there's a gap there you want to fix it the budget that's where the budget comes after the estimates because when the estimates are finished, they say, well, good, we got a gap. How we can fix this? <coughs> and you then address the cap, cigarettes, you cap, rum, you cap, this, you cap, whatever else they put the taxes on this thing. And you get the taxes then for that full year to cover that deficit. She's not doing that now. She's keeping the taxes secret from you. She is telling you they were going to tell you a little later what we are what we are planning to do. All that will do is to hurt you even more because if you tell you in six months, the money that you will pay in six months. Now, if it had been spread over an entire year, you would be paying at least it'd be less painful. So she doesn't care about the pain and suffering of the poor people. She abuses the poor people of Barbados. And that is another area where she decides that she is not going to follow the rules. I understand why she established this thing, but going to be well, you know. Don't let nobody fool you. You see, when she was there misbehaving in the house today, and those other drones were there thumping the table and laughing, because they may not know better either. It, it, they, they are just like the same people that go there really wear t-shirts and, and, and jump up and say make they, 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 they have to do that because she's like Kim Jong-un you know his uncle dropped to sleep at a, um, a speech he made and he got executed for it so they they, they but she can't execute nobody in there but she will take with the ministry so they're going to clap and thunder us and make these thunderous applauses when she speaks or else they're in trouble that's what it's all about no substance so what we have in Barbados right now is a caricature uh, um, a parody of what government is mm -hmm. you have a, a set of ministers who have all the trappings of ministers and the salaries of ministers but they got, they're not ministerial material they don't know what they're doing so when she says many hands make light work they're going to work for them to do they don't know what to do. They're giving the work to the civil servants. Civil servants are about actual, the admin work. The minister is about policy. Uh, you cannot call a civil servant 
to explain government policy. He was not. He was not in that. He's not there for that. That is not his job. But you have ministers, some of them who can barely read, and you're asking them to come and explain to the country. They can't do it. And she knows they can't do it, but she made sure she got people who she can control and give them big salaries that they will never see again in their life. Yeah. I, I can have no I, I agree with you that that is the only way she can do it. You either got to tax or borrow. But when you borrow, my great grandchildren will have to pay it back because right now my grandchildren. Um, and, and because if you delay it for 10 years, my, my, my grandchildren can start giving me great grandchildren, you know. I have a grandson who, you know, I suspect that he can give me one anytime soon. They gotta be careful with him. So, my great grandchildren will be paying those taxes, yeah. And they don't care why they don't care. I go to office and they're done with that. I go worry about the next government that comes in, I go worry about all they pay back. This is the selfishness. That she's practicing and calling it governance. She is showing the people of Barbados, I can do what I like. Because the problem will not be mine to fix. If she, if she, if she demits office, because she ain't going to the uh, UN, as boy, uh, they're trying to tell you, or the, uh, the um, propaganda they put out there, but, she, but how great she is, she troubled Putin. And Putin has a veto she will not get any job that Putin has to say in. So don't about fool you with that. So when she demits office, she will sit down and watch whoever, B or D, or any other party that might come up, try to solve the problems that she created. Because right now she is creating a problem. Right now, if she had the if she wanted to do the decent thing, she would tell us how she can close that gap. Or spend less. Because there's a, there's a way to close the gap. Spend less. Like spend less on salaries for yourself. That's a little that's a little bit of closing of the gap. Take away the cars from Santia. Because they understand that she has a show for driving her and the traveling the lots. And the because the, the, the um the order that establishes salaries gives her travel not to give her a car. So, but I, we, we see what is happening now. They, as Prime Minister, you can do what you like, and there's no, there's no questioning. There was no questioning now in the House because we were questioning her out here as she has acknowledged that yeah. we are getting under her skin. <laughs> but I, I, I don't that, want to be under her makes, skin. That makes you happy, right, Caswell? <laughs> I'm always happy. I'm a very happy man. <laughs> and if I'm getting under her skin, even happier. <laughs> <laughs> You know, um, Lucinda, uh, Lucinda Ali says, we the seniors, and this is what, this is a part of it, this is why I'm saying, let us not get distracted, um, because it's not going over the way that she's intending it to go over. It's just confirming who she is. Um, the, this person said, we the seniors are afraid of her. She frightened us. We had to turn off the TV, um, the hot air. She's bullying and intimidating. Let we go, Mia. Let someone else care for us, cause you don't care. And I think I think that's quite heartfelt. And I think that is what the people of Barbados, um, what they are actually, what they're actually feeling tonight. Um, that um, the opposite of what you're trying to do um, is not. It's not happening. And um, I I feel so proud, Mr. Franklin. I feel proud of every loyal opposition. If you're watching tonight, you should be very proud of yourself. Very, very proud of yourself. Because what we're a we were able to achieve in the last seven, eight months is to become that voice of the opposition. Before Mr. Thorne came on the scene, we were that voice of opposition and we still are. We still are the voice of the, the opposition. He's the leader of the op opposition, the official leader of the opposition. You know, but the people of Barbados, we are now an educated set of people um, in Barbados. Not just, you know, from what we learn at school, but we're learning so much on this show. And it's informing us that we can look at what happened tonight and we know that something is wrong with that. Because we were taught on the show what the budget is supposed to be. And it, it wasn't a budget speech. 
right? It wasn't a, a budget speech. And so I want everybody who's listening to be proud of yourself, proud of being Barbadian, proud of your of what you, you, you have learned since you, we've started this process. Be proud of yourself. Go to bed smiling tonight. A loyal opposition said, send me something. She said, I feel so fussy. I feel fussy, she said, because what we're getting under her skin, we're getting our point, we're, 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 we're getting to her. And that is it. The point is getting, I feel so proud, the person right, as a loyal opposition who marches. Wow, the prime minister mentioned us, so we are extremely important to have been mentioned in the country's budget ramble. Big up to all marchers. See you all on Saturday. And that's the spirit that I, I got from it. I was cracking up. Somebody sent it to me, Mr. Franklin, while I was in class. And I am so, you know, I'm so excited uh, uh, about this. It means that it's working. Do you realize? <laughs> Do you realize it's actually working? It's working. And, you know, a young person sent this to me. I want to read it. I want to read it. Um, a young person sent this to me. Um, that she said um, that that the, the, right that she has legitimized. He says um, that she's legitimized the loyal opposition. She has really affirmed us. She's legitimized the loyal loyal opposition. In fact, what they said was that. Um, <clears throat> The, the little the little thing that was going around, they were calling for people to come out to support and let there be a sea of red at the parliament and so on. And one of the things that they're saying, you know, because we have to outnumber, what did they say? The, these concerned citizens. You believe that? <laughs> this is a political party is saying that, listen, we have to go up there because we have to outnumber the concerned citizens. It's you that they're talking about. You should have a big smile on your face. And that's why tomorrow there is an initiative tomorrow at 2 30. There is an initiative 2 30 tomorrow at the parliament um building in support of the leader of the opposition. And I tell you all the time, I don't care what color party the leader of opposition decide to line up behind. I really don't care. You can you can label me, call me what you want to call. I know what is truth and I stick by the truth. And I'm saying that tomorrow at 2.30, 2.30, right? We're going to gather right there at that parliament building. Um, I saw something was sent to me by Kimar this evening and we are going to go out tomorrow to welcome and some of you who can go in to be, go, go early to get inside the gallery because you know what's going to happen. They're going to try to go in there and to try to ball him down and to do whatever. But that man, that man is, is so intelligent, you know, and he's going inside there with lots of angels with him. Don't worry. You don't worry. The people will see their behavior. The people will see their behavior tomorrow. Right, and we're going to be up there to support. So it is. Um, so we have an assignment tomorrow. We have an assignment tomorrow. So let this rile you up, man. Let this be an encouragement to you. <laughs> let this, this. This is good stuff. This is good, good stuff because it means that you know what she could actually say some of the things that we are saying. She talked about the child protection bill, the cyber crime bill, all the things that we are concerned about. She's speaking about that. She talked about the IDB test. She's still talking about that. You know, didn't mention Springer when they run out on those children with, with cutlass and, 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 uh, and fake guns. She didn't talk about that. But the point is this, that what we, she is echoing what we're saying. She's hearing what we're saying. The, and to all, the, all of them, and I know some of them are watching tonight because they watch the show and we say welcome. It's good to Absolutely. have Absolutely. It's so good to have you here. Yeah, as as a matter of fact, when, when you said that somebody, you remember when you came on the show, you said that somebody had sent your comment. I actually thought it was her that sent your co comment. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, I tell you, it just goes to show, you know, how uh, how important this show is. 
And um, someone on the chat, I, I was watching the chat that was going on while she was actually doing her presentation. And someone referenced the fact that <clears throat> there was a, some criticism of the Mar of Marcia Weeks. And the person said, don't call her name, call her channel. You know, and I, I thought to myself, but you know, this is this is the Marcia Weeks show, but this is the loyal opposition. And you see, that's that's what they've been trying to do down through the last several months is to isolate Mrs. Weeks. And folk, the reality is that this show is your show. This show is our show. It's not just about Marcia. It's about us, the people, the 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 loyal opposition. And there are people, you know, today, um, today, Marcia, I was making my way into Carter's. And I heard someone shout me, Rev, you are on tonight. I am missing it. I'm behind you 100%. I know the person is a staunch Barbados Labour Party supporter. <laughs> you know, and as I got into the, into the store, everywhere I turned, there was somebody who said, you know, I watched the show up to a couple of days ago, a principal of a school, I won't call the name of the school, she said to me, I don't miss the show. It's the one place I can get the political truth in Barbados. So I am so happy to know that uh, obviously either she watches the show or persons report to her. It would appear to me that she does watch the show because she was exceptionally specific about the areas tonight. And I'm grateful to her drawing that to the Barbadians' attention. People who were watching CBC, people who are watching YouTube. I'm so happy that she drew all of this to their attention tonight, which we have been doing. Yeah. You know, um, uh, and we want to let people know that um, the march is, remind people of the march. The march is coming up. The march is coming up on Saturday. So we get to see each other twice. Um, so tomorrow we're down at the Parliament building at 2.30 um, tomorrow. Um, we're going to be there. And then Saturday we are at 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock, you know. And, uh, you know, um, we, we, we invite you all to come along. Come along and join us because I, I, I could tell you, 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 you all want to be part of it too, you know. I think I think some of those MPs, uh, Mr. Franklin, they're looking on and, and wish that they could be that outspoken. Um, somebody somebody put up a, a thing here that, that um, breaking news. They said um, put up something here. Breaking news: two male MPs develop missing ball syndrome today in the Barbados Parliament during the budget rant of the PM. Medical personnel are baffled by the lack of testic testicular fortitude. <laughs> Quite interesting. <laughs> You know, I, I know, I know, I know there are some of those MPs that want to come out and join because you yourself are disgruntled. <laughs> you're watching the show and I know you're disgruntled as well. What what you, you, you know, you signed up for is not what is happening. In fact, you don't have a voice. You realize that you don't have a voice. You are involved in something that you wish. You look at Mr. Thorne and you say to yourself, you know, you, you wish that um, you could, um, you could be, you could join him and you could join him. You could join him. Those of you who are watching, um, you come on and you watch the show and secretly in your heart, you're happy for us. <laughs> and you don't want us to stop because because you don't want us to stop because you are, you know that what we're saying is the truth. And the education that happens on the show is just tremendous. Look at even um, uh, last night, Mr. Franklin, we mentioned about um, Lester Vaughn, which I, I I don't know if you have anything new you want to add to that because oh, I want to spend the whole night talking about uh, Mia Motley. We have so many things to deal with. Um, so I, I want to know, um, if, do we have anything new? Because we we just mentioned um, Lester Vaughn and Mr. Franklin was able to go in his bag, his little bag with a string, I'm teasing him, <laughs> and take on mm. all of those documents there that he had since 2018 that that was done reports 2018 2019 that parents didn't even know anything about past students didn't even know that it existed i've spoken to past students they didn't even know that it existed and here we were being educated on that um 
last night. Could you do a little review for us, Mr. Franklin? I guess he's 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 looking for that book. No, I, no, I um I have them here with me because I, I I didn't bring home the other ones today because I was looking for them in the office, but the office has been cleaned and it's in a mess. And what I said last night was that the problems at Lester Vaughan School were ongoing for a long time. And that, that there was, it had reached a point that the, they had to invite in specialists to check the air quality and the environmental quality and of the air in the building, right? And they made certain recommendations. Mind you, the, 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 uh, I'll give the exact date of the interviews with the staff. The staff were interviewed on the 26th of September 2018 about, their, about what they were experiencing. And the people who produced the report produced the report and sent it to the school on the 20th of September 2019. So even though they know there were challenges, there, there was no um, real urgency about fixing them because the people did not know. Right? But they, they, they made recommendations. I don't know. And then in some instances they said, oh, that they were, um, that, that, that the problems have stopped. You are telling me that the problem stopped. I can still smell the stench. Mm -hmm. So the teachers continue to be smelling, even though the report says that the um that the, the things have been abated and that the, the, the problem no longer existed. It continued and the staff com continued to get lightheadedness. Um some of them lost voice. And you can't have a teacher losing the voice. You, you, you gotta teach. That's what the things they do. You teach with your voice, and these things, these 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 things come come over. They said um, the well was resealed and tested a week after, and there was no venting of the sewage gas of sewer gases. That might have been the case for a few hours, or a week, but they started back in full force. One well, of the reasons why these things are going on, and, they, and you can't tell me that it is not so, is that when they put down the pipes, some of the pipes pass trees, and the trees have roots. The trees get bigger, the roots grow farther, and they break up the pipes. So the, the Barbados Union of Teachers, and they must com commend them. They stuck to their guys because their members were getting sick all the time. And they decided that they must. They insisted on having smoke tests. Smoke test is just exactly what you're saying. A test with smoke. You pump smoke into the into the well, and then you would see where the smoke is coming out. If the smoke is coming out, that means the invisible gases that are making people sick are also coming out. You had methane. You had carbon monoxide. You had hydrogen sulfide. You had ammonia. All of these things were coming out. They were coming out, but they were invisible. And it, but of course, you had hydrogen sulfide, which is stink. So hydrogen sulfide smells like rotten eggs. So teachers were breathing this in day in, day out. But the smoke test forced them now to take steps. And because now they have evidence, and because the Barbados Union of Teachers was able and I'm not going to criticize the union when they're doing good. And they, and they did well. They fought for their members. And they, and they got some results. The school is closed. And I suspect they don't know what to do. Because even now, when the, the school is closed, there's no remedial work going on. What they have done is to tell the teachers, don't come back and hear this thing again for your health. They tell the students, they ain't supposed to come in here, thank you for your health. And they tell the people who exercise at, on the school compound, you know, on the evening when you want to run, instead of running, and run like a car, knock you down, or you get shin splints from running on the hard road, people will go and run on the pasture. It's a community school, you know, you go to the community and you do your exercise on the pasture. They even stop them 
from exercising because the environment isn't good and some of those people are people around my age and older who exercise and they didn't want to kill them off but they are insisting that the non-teaching staff the ancillary staff the office staff they turn up for work even though everybody else is off the compound today and last night right after the show some person sent me a message on whatsapp saying what they were listening they said but we just get the roster they send they send up the roster they keep insisting that those those people go um go up there and work and i don't know what the janitors will do if the children are not messing up the school what the janitors are going to be doing cleaning you want industrial cleaning janitors are not equipped to do industrial cleaning you want some people to fix those um areas where the gas is leaking janitors are not supposed to be doing that watchmen are supposed to be doing that um executive officers or um clerk typists or school secretary or headmaster secretary they're not supposed to be doing that so you want them in the school for you know and and, and th this is the problem we have too many instances where and and and, and i have an, i had two reports one from the 2019 and I, and more recently I got one that was done by the Eunice Gibson Polyclinic. And they sent out environmental officers and they found a lot of um fun, fungi or fungi. And I will not attempt to call the names again last night. I had a little piece of my tongue missing by the time I was finished. And I I am not going to tell you them again but they found several different fungi in the music room and in case you fun it's fungi all right fungi fungi um <laughs> but whatever it is it was there <laughs> you know remember some years ago there was this politician <sighs> who he was saying he saw a whole flock of cows and somebody was trying to correct him and says no heard heard he said i ain't heard it i saw them <laughs> 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 yeah. so, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, so you know i don't call his name he has to have children alive and thing and some of my friends but i will just tell you what happened it's the um the environmental health officers who did this report they identified the mold and fungi or fungi and they said that um exposure to mold and fungi causes a variety of health effects and some persons are sensitive to mold persons who have underlying lung disease lung disease immune suppression or asthma are possibly more sensitive to mold and this may result in them having more intense reaction the following are health symptoms of prolonged mold exposure, rashes, fatigue, aches and pains, chronic sinus problems, nose bleeding, sore throat, skin infections, mold induced asthma, watery eyes, neurological problems, hypersensitivity, pneumonitis, nausea and vomiting, and allergic bronchial pulmonary and one of those long words again, aspergillosis. Whatever that is. I hope I don't get it because they want something I can pronounce. Um, <laughs> no, I don't want that them things. I got that boy boy got. You know what I mean? And you can imagine. They know all of these things, you know. This is not new. And if they didn't know, she should have called the ministry up and find out where, what these things will cause. No, they kept the children inside there. Kept the parents inside there. And those things will cause those children to be retarded in their ed education you know the, you, you you can't learn well if you're sick and if you're sick and can't breathe good you can't and you got your nose bleeding your throat sore you're going to be paying attention you got too much things to worry about and, and and the thing is you have so many people who the only place that they have in common is the last of all school and all of them getting the same things you should know by now that has to be last of all school the, the, the guy who spoke last night on the show, he was attributing it to um, Bees Bottle. Not that Bees Bottle got a lot of rats up there too. 
but these are not rat born diseases. He was asking questions. Yeah, he, he was asking. That. Yes, you know, he was saying things, and he was suspecting that it was. I had to clear that. That's why I had to go on my bike. Because when I heard it, I couldn't allow people to believe that the, minister, uh, uh, that the Ministry of Education was keeping information from the staff that would protect their health. Under the Safety and Health Act, we're at, you are you nobody can force you to work in a situation that's dangerous to your health. Section one hundred and forty anybody interested they can read it. You know, the large school they they um they were closed down too because they had a lot of fungi and um <laughs> the and they they only start acting up because one of the teachers died. And, the, and, the, and when, they, when they were testing them during this illness, they discovered that they had some of these mold and uh, on, the, and, and on the lungs. They, and they died as a result. And then the teachers got scared. The school was closed. A report was made. And it has not been shared with the teachers yet. My just a few weeks that the, the, the report has been made and sent to the principal and then on to the Ministry of Education and not on to the, 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 the people who, who matter most, the people who have been getting sick, who have been working there all the time. And this is what a government is doing. The Prime Minister should talk about those things in the budget, you know, because she, she ain't talk about no real budget things, so she can talk about them instead of thumping her chest and trying to frighten people. So we, we, we have a very bad situation. And as I said, thanks to the Barbados Union of Teachers, the only other union besides Unity that is doing work on behalf of the people who pay them. Some of their members. And unfortunately, they were they were they were brought into the loop too late because too many people got sick before um, they found they 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 they, 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 they they were attributed to other things, and they were just thinking, "Oh, these little smells! You know, that this this bad these bad smells were making a lot of people really sick." Yeah. And the ministry knew. That's what problem that got me. The ministry knew as far back as when Karen Best was the chief education officer, because this report was made for for the attention of. Mrs. Karen Best, Chief Education Officer, and, Ms. and Dr. Donnelly Carrington, Chairman, Board of Management. This, uh, this report was addressed to them. So the ministry knew and the board knew. And this is the same board so, so that is forcing... So, when, so if we're looking at time, um, this, this, when, the DLP, when the PLP came into power, this was... This report was in 2019 or, to, or before them? This, this report was handed over to the school on the 20th of September 2019. 2019. So Santia Bradshaw would have been the, um, the, Minister, the, of the yeah. Minister of Education. Yeah. Minister of Education. She was also the Minister of Education when they did the first um, IADB survey. A lot of people don't know that. I hope, I hope you don't know. Now she got a lot to answer for. Not only the seven thousand five hundred dollars, she got to answer for these things too. You know, so unfortunately, you know, I said I came on last night to um, talk about some things that I <laughs> that I never got to. Yeah, you know, no, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. I cause what has been happening to me recently. I've been getting a lot of complaints from people who work in stores shops and today i had um matter of fact cg but some of them to, um to make appointments for some of them because of the things that they're going through today see cg they not only um a, a, a black card maker she's also known an industrial relations person <laughs> it seems to be rubbing off and i just want to highlight a few things that happens to shop assistants that should not be happening. First of all, one of the things that they told me is that they only get half hour for lunch. 
I don't want to um, say my opinion. It is not my opinion. It says subject to subsection 6. This is the holidays with this is the Sharps Act, rather. Section 6. Mm -hmm. well, let me start at the top. The number of hours in any one week excluding intervals for meals during which a shop assistant may be required to work shall not exceed 40. That's one. So you can't tell them, hold on, and don't get, and, and don't give them more money. And you can't force them to hold on. Then it says, subject to subsection 6. This is, this is subsection 2. No shop assistant shall be required to work a, on any day for more than four and a half consecutive hours without an interval of one hour for meal time and for, and for more than eight hours in the aggregate to run continuously from the time he commences work but excluding intervals for meals. All that means is that they can't tell you take your lunch just before you go home because they won't keep you in there. You, they cannot legally force you to work for more than four and a half hours without getting an hour off for and not half an hour or 15 minutes they run back in here and they actually had a case where people didn't get the hour and they, i said listen man anyone coming up there really act and stop this nonsense because they got come young and like it and i didn't have to go because they bought a case against you people working in their place saying that take longer than a half hour and they only get a half hour for lunch and a lot of it is happening to people who come from outside of Barbados, set up business here and float our laws. And nobody is doing anything about it. I don't know when these people come to Barbados and want to set up business, when that they just think that they can come and do what they do in the States or wherever else they come from. They're just not, 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 not on. The next thing that I want to mention when you go off from work the interval between leaving work and coming back must be 12 hours it must be 12 hours or more so you can't ask a person to work until midnight and then come back six o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock in the morning it must be right. at least a 12 hour break mm -hmm. Right, uh, but, but because what it I happens. Was ask, do workers, the workers, they know these things? Is it something that's posted? no? They don't. Is this put up? The... Okay. They don't. They don't post it. Every every time people their rights, you then you can't treat them so. So you keep these things from them, and a lot of these people don't know their rights. Right. The um. The next thing. You must they can't make you work for more than five days in a week you must get two days off then they're gonna to go to four where shop assistant works a on any public holiday or day off that shop assistant is entitled to be paid twice as much as his ordinary rate so you get double time for working on your day off so if they ask you to come in and you're supposed to work on that uh, come in at work you got to pay you double time it isn't happening now in a lot of places right and if you work overtime like say you work your eight hours and they want you to work over that over over time that shop assistant is entitled to be paid one uh, pay time and one half that shop assistant that shop assistant's ordinary rate so you get time and a half for overtime people are not paying that i've seen pay slips where people tell you or oh, um you're supposed to work 40 hours a week and they what they do they, they give, make you work overtime and then cut you off on the Friday and only work the Friday so you don't get 40 hours because or if you get 40 hours but eight of those hours would have been overtime which should have been paid at time and a half they don't pay at time and a half you get time and a half after eight hours a day not after 40 hours a week 
a lot of people does that to staff they say okay you only work 40 hours so you're gonna get no overtime that's not what the law says you're paid you're daily paid and you get paid time and a half after eight hours so if you work monday and you work overtime monday but then you don't can work tuesday or you you can't take those overtime days and stick them in for tuesday for the eight hours on tuesday people do that that, that happens to shop assistants yeah. a lot. I have seen pay slips that people do it because they didn't have the 40 hours a week, so they don't get overtime. That is a crime. No shop assistant shall be required without his consent to work overtime or to work on the day he observes as the religious uh, day of religious worship so if you go to church on sundays and you uh, open the store and you say why go to sunday school let you teach sunday school like kind of anything that my day they can't force you to work they ain't gonna pay you yeah. but they can't make you think but people threaten staff for not coming to work yeah. on saturdays if they're adventists yeah and i've seen that i, I i've seen it a lot i've seen it a i've lot. seen it I, i've seen right. it. It, does, it but the law says you can't do it I've had I've had people involved in ministry that have said, you know, Pastor, I can't I can't do it because they tell me I have to work, and and I've been telling them, no, you don't. It, it, the law protects your day, your religious day, whatever it is, whatever religion you are, Rasta or whoever you have, you are entitled to a day to recognize your your religion, your worship. All right, this is the, there's a penalty for doing so. An occupier who dismisses or otherwise penalizes a shop assistant for a refusing to work over time or to work on the day yeah, the shop assistant observed as the day of religious worship That's is right. guilty of an offense and liable on summary conviction to a fine of fifty thousand dollars or to imprisonment for three years or both but nobody will prosecute them the labor department will not bring cases against these people will not inform the director of public prosecution that they're going to bring cases against these people so we have a useless Labor, chief labor officer who does not enforce the law or do not try to enforce the law because if you to prosecute one person pretty just one the rest would, would would back off and start following the law but because they know that nothing can happen and then the worst that will happen to them is that the labor department tell them well you got paid the people over time or whatever else that's the worst that can happen to the people flout the law well, let me ask you something, Caswell. If during the time, <clears throat> excuse me, during the time, of course, uh, you know, a case has to be heard and so on. Uh, are they required to be paid during that time that they are off because of this matter? I, I didn't hear that. Sorry. No, I was asking, you mentioned, you know, if a person is, is uh, penalized, if you want to call it that, um, or, or suspended, dismissed, let's use the word suspended. Um, for not turning up for work on a day, or a religious day of their religious observation. Uh, obviously, it's a matter that should go before the chief labor officer, but during that time... It should, it should go to the court, but the chief labor officer should be the person reporting it to the, to the DPP who will take it to the court. So it goes it goes to the chief labor officer first? Yeah, the chief labor, you will go to the labor department, and the labor right. department will... The labor department will take because the what will happen, the police, if you go to the police, the police can take the labor department. But the chief labor officer has the power to prosecute. If they're not, they're not trained for it, they, they can um, actually then use the services of the director of public prosecutions to bring these cases as they do with um, holidays with pay. Because if a, a lot of people refuse to pay people on their holiday, and that's a crime and if you refuse to pay people or pay them short that's a crime too under that piece of legislation the chief labor officer can take you to court and they do so you can take them before the employment rights but you know you can take them to court you got two avenues now all right and um now during that time that they're being taken to court and, and that type of thing they may not be working 
are they still required to be paid or at the end of no, the No, you but you but if you fire them, you can't fire them. And if you mm -hmm. fire them, that's another offense. Right, so they should be paid so during that time. You got paid. You see, it, this shouldn't happen because if you put up if you tell a person, but look, I am suspending you, you got pay. You suspension without pay is dismissal. It's actually constructive dismissal. It is not um where the employee say you go. It is where you say, um, I'm suspending you, but don't pay. Because one of the reasons you go to work is pay. So if you change my terms and conditions to my detriment to such a point where it, it can where I can you I can't continue to work under those conditions, that is called constructive dismissal. Not that the employer dismiss you but dismiss you, but his behavior forced you to resign. And the, the, the courts and the tribunals treat treat that as a dismissal and constructive dismissal and you then end up paying compensation to the person who you sent home right i had a case on wednesday thursday last week at the labor department we settled it eventually but this was a case where a man was fired because he let go of that rh um thing so there's a person who refused to pay him his vacation money. He's going on vacation on the 21st of December. It's a construction business. So they're closed down for the holidays. And he, the law requires you to pay the vacation the day before the person goes on vacation, you know. So if you're entitled to three weeks vacation, you will get three weeks pay plus that week that you just finished working. Or four weeks if you have worked for more than five years for that same yes. employer. But on pay day, and at the last day of work, when they're sending you on vacation, he goes to get his vacation pay, and there's no vacation pay there for him. He was upset, and he asked the pay master or pay mistress because it was a woman. Who? Uh, she? How about the money? She said she gave us some, some monkey answer, and she told him then you will get the money on the eleventh of January. And he said, who tell you I can live to 11th of January? She said, well, if you don't live to 11th of January, we'll give it to your children. So that brought out the RH. They fired him for that. He was provoked. The lucky thing is they didn't do the dismissal correctly. I'm not going to educate employees. and might not do the right thing to dismiss nobody. Just to say that the dismissal was not done correctly. And according to the law, If you do not follow the procedures set out in the Employment Rights Act, the dismissal, don't care what the body do, is unfair. So you could have been guilty as hell, but the employer now has a procedure to follow. And if he does not follow that procedure, he, he just found himself paying you compensation for unfair dismissal. When he, if he had followed the law and, and do the right thing, like how we asked him he had to do the right thing, then he would not be required to pay a cent. But you breach the law, you got to pay. I had a case at the supermarket where this lady called me. She said that the people just called in the office and said she, she dismissed. I said, where's the letter? No letter. You got to get him a letter. There was no letter. So I, I, I said, I was busy, so I didn't take much instruction. I said, okay, okay. That's automatic unfair dismissal. So I'm going to hear more. Now we go to the labor department and... I said, well, you know, she did dismiss without going through any procedures whatsoever. No writing, nothing in writing. Just said she left people in place. I said, that is unfair dismissal. The employer had a, a very experienced um, person representing them. And when she heard my presentation, she said, Caswell, you got my man. Let me go outside and say hello. So we went outside and we decided to, that because the employer did the wrong thing, that the, the employer going to pay compensation. And the labor officer who was conducting the meeting said, I would still like to see that video, you know, but I even know the video was involved because I didn't get that far. I just heard that they did the wrong thing and that's it for me. And I foolishly sat down and watched the video and there's my girl there stealing. <laughs> you know? and, but she was stealing in front of the camera but because 
the employer did the wrong thing, she got compensation. So all the employers, so when the, the union and the employers get together, the union mini bill that works and say the employment right act is unfair. It is not unfair. It says that you got to give people natural justice. You got to give them the opportunity to be heard. There's nothing wrong with that. If they had given the, that person the opportunity to be heard, they would have been dismissed. All right. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing you do about it. But if you if you do the wrong thing, you can't end up right. And that's and that yeah. is what. The decisions have been, and from the courts have come out, and from the tribunal and from the court of appeal has said, you got to follow the procedures. So if you got to follow the procedures, yeah. how is that unfair to the employer? Mm -hmm. It is not. It is just the employer got to do the right thing, not because you you are big McGuffey, you can't come and say, um, "Oh, there's my person, you you dismiss." You got to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So the employment rights Act has a few problems with it, but not as much as they're trying to make out, because they don't want to make sure. That employers don't could get a bit with, with, with bad behavior, and I've even heard some person on the tribunal saying, "Oh, that you should lower the amount of money they get if you found that." They no, do the right thing. Right. That's all we are asking. Yeah. This yeah. also in this place in this act that we talk about shops act, you got to provide drinking water, free of cost, for the use of shop assistants. So, if you can't expect them, because some of these stores only got a little bathroom, I don't expect the people to go in the bathroom and drink water from the pipe. So, some of these shop assistants bring work down water. You've seen it. No, the employer is required by law to provide drinking water. Yeah. You know, and, um, yeah. Well, you know, Mr. Franklin, we, we are so grateful um, for you. Someone was saying, you know, you are doing so much more for the people of Barbados. They, yeah. You know, I get the calls every day. People need Mr. Franklin's number. And and we, we want to applaud you for the work that you do. And that's why I say we're not going to be distracted. We keep focused, keep our eyes on the goal, you know, uh, Dr. Ferdinand, and keep moving. Yes. We are the opposition. We are the loyal opposition in this country and we are made up of citizens just regular people you know like miss corbin here mrs rose corbin she's here i'm gonna let her say a, a few words there you know uh but uh, I'm a, we, we, it's it's all of us it's caswell um you know we started out with myself and caswell and maxine mclean and then it just uh, we kind of just you know um you know, it, it just kind of mushroomed in all these different people and, and all of the, everybody who's on. People are commenting. Tonight we had over 1,300 people on. That's right. Um, tonight, That's right. And, and while the budget, while while the Prime Minister was on, somebody sent a message and told me... 151. Uh, 350 something people no, on. No, only 151. On. Only 151, uh, um, Marcia. After the show, after the after the budget, it grew to a few thousand. Right, no, but I, I remember. Oh, I see. Someone sent and told me that while they were watching, that they saw three hundred and fifty something people on. But they could be, you could be wrong. I could be wrong. No, so, it, it um, might depend. It might depend on the time they on the, the time, time they, they were yeah, watching. Might so let's go with the higher number. Yeah, the benefit of the doubt. Let's go with a higher number. So it's uh -huh. 391 persons, I was told, at 7 o'clock, 6.59, that were watching the, the program. And we, we went up to over 1,300 tonight. This is why, guys, I say put a smile on your face. The people of Barbados are being heard and we're being felt. Um, Rose yes. Corbin, good night, ma'am. Good to good see night. you. Good night, Rose. Good night. <laughs> Pardon me. Can I rose? Yes. Uh, I'm happy to be here. I know that this is not my slot, my evening, but Marcia, thank you for inviting me the, on at a yes. short notice, but I'm glad to be here. And uh, I've got myself to blame. Huh? I've got a headache that is out of this world. <laughs> I know exactly what you're going to say. But I blame myself. Uh, 
Pastor Ferdy, I blame myself. Marcia, I blame myself. <laughs> it's a headache that's hurting my throat. And um, it was just because, as I tell the listeners, that in being objective, I listen to all sides of the story. I read a book to the end. I don't skip pages. Yes. <laughs> and so I wanted to become informed and not get it secondhand or vicariously. And I listen and I blame myself, but I learned. Yes, learned. yes, yes. And uh, so, Marcia, I know that uh, I'm usually given to speaking on education, but I do speak to matters, others like I keep saying I was the one who challenged the Prime Minister on governing remotely. But her very presentation today shows that she's indeed governing remotely. She seems not to be in touch really with, with what's happening. And the Prime Minister started out by saying she's going to have a conversation with her. I think that here, amongst us, as panelists, we have conversations. I think out there in the audience, we have conversations. You can see in the chat. We don't scream, we don't rant, we don't breathe, we communicate. And therefore, when I heard the Prime Minister in her inimitable fashion saying that she was going to have a conversation, I would say that probably this like meet with the parish or parish speak or whatever, but she's going to have a conversation with us because she misses us so much <laughs> that she's going to take this opportunity to engage <laughs> with us and have a family setting and a family get together. But it certainly didn't turn out to be that. And but I learned. I learned today and I want to engage ourselves for just a few minutes with some research that I did very quickly. After Marcia, you you um, invited me to come on. And I noticed that that conversation was full of shaming and blaming. I don't need to expand on that, but there was shaming and blaming. And I am wondering now that if COVID-19 and the ash fall and the, the bad um, system we had, if, and the, 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 it went so far back as the DLP is still alive and well, because they got a lot of blame. And the, 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 the Air Force fathers who laid the, the pipes for the water, they're still being blamed over a century or more. <laughs> it seems to so show that we are always looking for opportunities, if not to shame, but to blame. And that concerns me throughout one of the things I did, audience and fellow panelists, was to go and look at other persons who deliver budget speeches. And where could I go to as well, but to the UK, since we model our parliament from the British system. So I went to the UK and I pulled up from Sky News um, YouTube. The full, it said, the caption was in full, the Chancellor of the Exchequer 
the chancellor's budget statement. You know how long it is for? One hour, five minutes, and 43 seconds. You got that? Mm -hmm. This Britain, the UK, and the exchequer, the chancellor of the exchequer, Mr. Hunt, MP Hunt, was able to deliver a budget speech in one hour, five minutes, 43 seconds. Then I went to look at the one that was delivered today and that was four hours, 26 minutes, 54 seconds. And no budgetary proposals. <laughs> and that's well, you are bringing me to it. You know, I like to do my research and I like to educate. I researched the word budget, budget speech, and it says, and I'm using the Collins Dictionary, the speech in which the Chancellor presents the budget to Parliament. What we heard was a lot of long talk, enough speech, but no budget. No, I then decided I want to learn some more, so some good has come out of it. And according to the business standard, the question is posed, what is a budget? One minute, I've got it here. What is a budget? And uh, no, I'm sorry, I lost that one. Wait, I'm, I'm getting it again. Please be patient with me because I don't want to mislead. But in this one, where is it gone? They said that the budget gives, uh, I'm coming back to it, I'm going to, I'm going to come back to it. But I was also, I closed my eyes, Caswella Marcia, a Reverend Kirby and the others. I closed my eyes and I thought of the budget speeches that I would have listened to on Ready Fusion as a child growing up right up to color TV that we have now. And I closed my eyes and I listened to the past. I remember when we used to listen to Radio Barbados, remember Caswell and Radio Fusion. Mm -hmm. And the rum shops used to be rum, uh, jam pack. I lived in a village and they had just as many rum shops as churches. And everybody used to be around the radio when you pass the rum shop and the red fusion used to be on loud and you would hear less noise in this house i was listening to the budget that used to happen but you can't well. i'm listening to my prime minister and i could recall prime minister arabaro i could recall Prime Minister Tom Adams. I can recall um, definitely Prime Minister Erskine Sandiford, Prime Minister David Thompson, um, help me, Prime Minister Frundell Stewart. And never was there the ranting and the raving and the screaming and the shaming and the blaming. And yes, they had difficult times and challenges and with the economy and with the state of the roads and there were accusations thrown at them as opposition would and the people would and they acknowledged and they too would attribute um, a blame to the previous government that they would have uh, succeeded. But however, 
I can never recall the kind of I, 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 the kind of communication that we received today from the Prime Minister in what is supposed to be a budget speech. I remembered a presentation, you waited for it. You wanted to know what was in, 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 in the black box. So it was the Prime Minister who, who, who introduced the red bag. You were curious. I am still waiting to hear a budget speech. And my question was and remains, if the government, we are having such good governance, if we have done so well, it is well with the state of affairs and we are climbing up. I'm not an economist, so um, I'm just speaking like the ordinary person. We're doing good and our ranking and ratings have improved internationally. And uh, we are, the country's doing good under this government. Why should there be such quarreling and fretting up and getting hot under the collar? The two don't exist side by side. If you are having a good relationship with your partner, with your spouse, and all is good in the house, and you can say all is well, things have improved. Unless you are having a meltdown, unless you are not in touch with reality, you will start ranting and raving against the same house or against the strikes you have made. Do it make sense, Marcia? And this is what has given me the headache, the contradictions. I am hearing that we're doing so good. And this is what good governance looks like. And then alongside of it, you were hearing the shaming and this blaming. It does not settle with me. And as I said, curiosity got me and I went doing my research on how long does it take to, to deliver a budget speech. And if the UK could do it in one hour and five minutes, and 43 seconds. Pray tell me, you brighter people out there, what is so peculiar about us that our PM had to spend four hours, 26 minutes and 54 seconds and we are still left void of a budget. If I miss something, somebody tell me they heard a budget and i would ask you i'm not getting it pull up here on my um, cell phone but i am asking you my 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 colleagues out there to go i found that very good article on from the business standard what is budget presentation and it says i'm trying to pull it up what the, it is all about and it says it is the a statement of the estimated receipts and expenditure it talked it talks about 
the the uh, how the, the 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 economy has done over the last year. Uh, what are the the highlights of the last year? What are the achievements? What are the challenges? How would they be addressed? And the way forward and how the money will be raised if through taxation. Uh, those kind of things. Please tell me if we heard that. I may have missed something uh, that you may have heard. But clearly, if, and I saw it in the chat, yeah. if I were the leader of the opposition tomorrow, my, and this wouldn't be a retort, this wouldn't be any way insulting or facetious, but it would be a request, please, could, I am now listening for a budget, the budget speech, or could someone from that side summarize for me the salient points of that budget speech? Because when we pull away the fluff, when we pull away the asides, when we pull away the grandstanding, I am still left to know where we are at, what has gone before, the challenges, where we are at, <coughs> and where we are going. And that yes. I have not heard. But I do know that when I closed my eyes, I literally closed my eyes and I could hear the red diffusion and I could hear, then I could see the fuzzy, remember how the TV used to have the, the snowy effect because it was not a good reception or yours always had a good reception uh, past the Ferdinand, but how you used to have the fuzzy, you could barely make out Tom's face, Tom Adams's face or Arrow Barrow's face, and um, with due respect to them, the four, you couldn't make it out, yeah. but you were glued to the And you, you didn't get that today. You, did, you didn't get that today. Well, the no, thing is, four, four, four minutes to ten, four minutes to ten o'clock. So, so I um, pause here. I yeah. pause here. Somebody put here. Canada's budget 2023 was 1 hour 27 minutes 32 seconds. And we went on for four hours and more, almost four and a half hours. Four and a half. And almost one four. of the things I would say is that if whomever is seeking elevation, to the UN position, I would suggest to that person and to their PR team to go and review some of the speeches made by the Secretary General of the UN. And they would note that it is not done like how we saw it in that four hours, 26 minutes and 54 yes. seconds. I almost four and a half, food. almost four and a half hours. Well, Ms. Mrs. Corbin, we, we are going to stop here um, tonight and thank you for that detail and um, um, the analysis, really. And you you had me here searching um, on the Caribbean island um, as you were talking. It's something I'm going to do before, before I go to bed. Um, and you know what I love? Um, I'm glad about everybody. On the show, Dr. Ferdinand, um, Mr. Franklin, if you all check your notes, Mr. Franklin went out, went and explained to you what was going to happen um, at the budget. And he do, um, he and Ms. McLean went through and showed you that there was almost a one billion difference gap there. And we are going to hear today on how we're going to close that gap. And that was not done. And Ms., uh, Mrs. Corbin is coming today to confirm 
that 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 is not what was done so we're not we're not fools the good thing is about education you know thank god for borrow we have free education we can read you know and go on and do your studies um you know a little uh, after the show is over and you will be able to confirm a lot of what we are what what is being said on the show you know and that's why we're coming out um on saturday saturday at 10 o'clock we have the march but before that tomorrow those of you please come down to the parliament at 2 30 tomorrow to support the leader of the opposition as he goes in he knows he has his citizens i am going as a citizen not as a member of the dlp because i'm not i'm going as a citizen of barbados and i'm part of the opposition so i go tomorrow to celebrate and to to encourage the leader of the opposition and i'm inviting you to join me tomorrow i will try to go live as well i'll try my best to see if that is that is possible okay um dr ferdinand um what can you say to the people as it relates to um coming to coming out tomorrow to support the leader of the opposition at 2 30 and the march on saturday those two things please thank you well, well certainly tomorrow marcia it has not been the leader of the opposition's request that we turn out that is our choice we yeah. haven't had to uh we haven't had to message anybody uh, we haven't had to message the leader of the opposition or anything. This is our decision as the loyal opposition and as citizens of Barbados. So that's the, the first thing with regards to tomorrow, unlike some other instances we've heard. And then, of course, uh, we want to invite you to be a part of the march on Saturday. You would have heard, and, and I think, can I, can I, can I pull it up, uh, Marcy? Is that all right if yes. I? If I if I pull it up, you have yeah. heard uh, you have heard what Marcia indicated uh, with regards to the to the content of that march, and we are looking at uh, the resignation of the PM. No salary increase for the PM or members of Parliament. If you really care about the well-being of Barbadian citizens, set the example. No muzzling of citizens. That's with reference primarily to the cybercrime bill. Uh, we're marching in in terms of these issues, the external audit of the Barbados Revenue Authority, uh, the Hope Housing Project. I heard mention of that tonight, and I and I smiled when I heard it, you know, Marcia. It, it, I, I had to smile. Uh, there's two, I learned this, two things cannot be diametrically opposite and be correct at the same time. I, I learned that. So one has got to be true, and one has got to be a lie. And the people of Barbados will make a decision based on what they watch this afternoon and what they watch on this show. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much, um, uh, Dr. Ferdinand. Um, and um, Rose, can you quickly talk to the people about coming? We have what? Just we are we're a minute past a minute 10. after ten. Um, yeah, to invite people to come to support um, the leader of the opposition tomorrow and also the march. Yes, I I agree with that move to support the leader of the opposition. We may not be able to make it in, but I'm sure that like when he um, went into the house as the leader that morning of the opposition, how pleased and moved he was to have our support. I think he needs it even more now, tomorrow, than he did it back then. So I encourage ourselves to be there and certainly the march. We have so much now. We are seeing uh, a shift as evidence today. And so we have to keep pushing the issues as given here in the flyer and even more as we um, reflect and critique what we heard today from the Prime Minister. So folks out there, just don't join us here, but once you can, do come out on Saturday, March the 23rd, 10 a.m. we start from the Masika Park by Kensington Oval up to Independence Square. So let's get on the move, let me march to make a difference with her feet, her presence, her voices. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, 
thank you so much, Rose. Um, Mrs. Corbin, I don't call her Rose. <laughs> um, but um, let, let's um, uh, hear from the general. Let's hear from the general before we close um, tonight, sir. Um, uh, what are you saying to the people about coming out to support the um, the leader of the opposition tomorrow at 2.30 and also the march? You're muted, sir. Sorry. I, I, I usually turn off my mic so that I don't um, do anything. Um, I just before I say anything about that, I just want to read four lines from the Parliament website in England, UK Parliament website, and it, and dealing with the section budget and Parliament. It asks, "What is the budget?" And it says, "The budget or financial statement is a statement made to the House of Commons by the Chancellor of the Exchequer on the nation's finances and the government's proposals for." changes to taxation the budget also includes forecasts for the economy by the office for budget responsibility OBR. we didn't hear any of that today and this is what a budget is supposed to be it is not supposed to go up there and curse the marcy week show spend 15 minutes on the marcy week show and really big this up because i didn't expect that they call us something i can't remember what they call us now because i you know i tell people all the time there's a latin phrase that i a latin thing that i got maxim that i use i says aquila non capit moscas so i stay above the fray all that means is that the eagle does not catch flies so i don't let them um bother me i'm an eagle <laughs> you know? And so I, I don't listen to them. I just ignore the comments. So when they call us um, these other names, I I am um, I stay above that. But well, all I want to do to Barbados is to point out what is right, what is supposed to be the right thing to do, and I will not fall away from that until the Lord tells me Caswell come home, and He will tell me come home. Boys can call me home by Him. However, now we can talk about tomorrow. I knew that Ralph did not ask anybody to come out and support him when he crossed the floor. And I knew that he was surprised by the, the numbers that, that turned out. He was surprised. However, the Barbados Labour Party, obviously all last week before, they were telling their constituency branches to bring up um, 25 people from each branch to come out there so and jump up and keep noise and wear red shirts and all kind of nonsense. They are, this is um, what we call rent a crowd. You know, you're going to rent a crowd to bring out a turn out to make you look popular. She is not. She is failing. The, I want the people to come out door and support Ralph out of a genuine admiration and respect for him. Not because he summoned anybody to come out there. I know that he is not doing that. It is not necessary. You know, let the chips fall where they may. But this government wants to stack the chips. Make it look, give the wrong impression. Well, the Prime Minister's got wrong impressions because she gave us the wrong impression of a budget today. This is not what Barbados is used to. I have seen budgets as a little boy. I used to be down there standing alongside the radio. We had uh, we didn't have the radio future. We had what we used to call the private radio, which was CBC, you know what I mean? But we used to call it the private radio. And we were sitting down by the private radio. And then when we got um, TV, then we started getting it on TV. You know, and because it was an outside broadcast, as Rose said, you know, you didn't get it as clear. I got it clearer than a lot of people because I was too, not too far from the antenna, but it wasn't the best either. So I would urge the people to show their jet don't go get don't be frightened for anybody and it will help empower ralph let him know that we, we we understand what he is doing we respect him for what he is doing and we support what he is doing they they said they want to crowd them out 
and they want the people to get in there so that the concerned citizens don't get a chance to come in. So what they are saying to their people is that you are not concerned citizens, you are idiots. Mindless idiots. And that we can order you both to do these things. Nobody can get me to go and support now they disagree with. But they are saying, though if they're saying that they want their people to go in there and occupy these spaces before the concerned citizens can get in, then they are saying to their people, you are not concerned citizens. That is an insult. And she's continued to insult the people of this country, and some of them are taking it. Well, I could only wish them well because nobody will treat me like that. So, come out and support Ralph. Come out and support the march. That's all we ask you to do. Yeah. And these yeah. numbers will scare her. Yeah. That is why she started to curse the Marcy Week show. And, and as, God give, as God gives me strength, Marcy, I will be here with you. Tomorrow I have a meeting with my nurses because we're having some issues with the nurses and I'm going to meet with them tomorrow normally, normally meet Tuesday so I will try to get that meeting yeah. and then come over so I might come be a over. bit late thanks for reminding me Mr. Mm. Franklin because what we want to do tomorrow as we did tonight um, Dr. Ferdinand um, we are going to if if, if, our, if um, the leader of the opposition is, is um, speaking we want to we want to be able to carry that um, yeah. as well and we are going to have a show tomorrow so you get a bonus show this week <laughs> i yeah, saw yeah. my neighbor my neighbor oh my lord as you know the elderly gentleman and the, you know he's like i can't get enough of that show well you have a, you will have a show tomorrow and we will all be on guns blazing tomorrow you're gonna have this oh, queen is you. gonna be here caswell is you. gonna try to be here as well and kimar will be here and I don't know um, who else from. I know Mr. Murray will be here. He promised me he will be on, and I will check with the others. And we're going to be on tomorrow evening and going to really go Looking through everything um, in detail tomorrow. So um, we, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 7. Tell everybody we're on at 7. And furthermore, I get to see you tomorrow at 2.30 at the Parliament building, okay? 2 30 we're going outside the parliament if we can get in we get in okay but we're going to be there god bless you all thank you so much dr ferdinand and good for night. holding the court and doing a great job of good moderating night. as per usual hope you can join us tomorrow hope rose can join us tomorrow as well um we'll be on here tomorrow the whole gang we're on here. <laughs> gonna be a dynamite tomorrow. show tomorrow all I right tell so you. See, see you all guys Jeannie Motley. Um, God mysterious bless. Chesterfield, Simone Daniel, Easy Oh, D. wow. Oh, wow. And Easy D talk about rent a crowd. Ralph's not <laughs> renting a crowd. He doesn't even know what we're doing. Adrian <laughs> Hines, right? Uh, Adrian Hines, he says to meet with the nurses in Parliament Yard. <laughs> Tyro <laughs> Nurse, Norrigan <laughs> Wright, Pedro Gemma, Peggy Green, <sighs> Alvin Brown, everybody that's on. Good night, good night. <laughs> <laughs> I love this picture. Yeah. Make sure we say a prayer for him. Make sure we say a prayer for him. Yes. <laughs> God absolutely. Him. All right, guys. Have a good night. Have a good night. Good night. Bye -bye. God bless. Bye-bye.